All right, um, we're on. I'm here today with Rachel White. Hi, guys. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> so, um, I guess, how would I describe you? you you're a vlogger? YouTuber. Yeah, YouTuber? I do mixed between vlogs and, uh, you know, uh, creative videos as well. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, right now it's just a YouTuber, I think. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, that's the main, the main focus at the present moment? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I think YouTube is, like, one of my new points that I'm trying to build up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, um, I guess, you know, um, there's a whole bunch of cool things that I want to talk to you about in terms of languages and things like that. But I guess Mm. let's bring it all back (laughs) and um, try and give people a little bit of a chronological understanding because that's generally what I'd like to do. (laughs) Um, Perfect. So where did you grow up? I grew up in Australia, um, in Sydney, and I've never left that house. I've grown up for 22 years in that house and... um, I haven't left ever, so I've been very fortunate enough to be in Sydney in mainly the North Shore. Yep. Yep, North Shore area. Um, And I've only been overseas a couple of times to actually study, Mm -hmm. and that was through high school and college years. Okay. Um, And, yeah, that's pretty much the only time where I had to live everywhere else. Okay. So um, growing up, I guess, you know – how was your like? What would you? How would you describe your childhood? Or what, like, you know, what's some of your earliest memories? Oh gosh, earliest memories. <laughs> um, look, all I can remember uh, is that my childhood. I think my childhood was actually. I was very lucky. Lucky. I had a very happy childhood. Mm-hmm. I think um, my parents were very, you know, party goers. They loved to go have fun. They took us to the countryside a lot. Yep. And I actually became quite fond of the countryside. So okay. we always would go to farms and things like that. My relatives own some farms and things. Okay. So, yeah. So I would say farm life would be the earliest kind of memory for yep. me. Yeah. Never scared of the animals? <laughs> uh, I think I was scared more of the animals. But um, no, no. <laughs> luckily not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then um, so um, schooling was like? School wise, I um, went to both were public schools. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Um, I went to Middle Harbour, which was my primary school, which was near where I lived. And then I moved on to Mossman High School, which is like a creative arts high school. Okay. Um, it's also the only, I think it's one of the only high schools in New South Wales, Australia, I'm not sure, um, that don't have a uniform. So oh, wow. Yeah, actually, that was... So it's just all whatever you want. Mufti, really. Mufti, every day. Every day. Exactly. And um, it was very big about being your personal self and being who yep. you are earlier on okay. to figure out figure yourself out, out. yeah yep. did do you think that that would bring some problems like you know where you get very self-conscious uh i wasn't um but when uh, you know, looking around you could tell when people started feeling um you know judgment judgment mm. or any kind of um conflict from others because they you know when it comes to bullying mm. usually the first thing they start talking about is your appearance yep. right yep. and having mufti yeah that can be very easy and they yeah. can pinpoint it. But um, actually, luckily, our school, I haven't really experienced any of that. Um, okay. Our Mossman High was quite uh, creative and very, very open-minded yep. people. So, yep. it, yeah, nothing really bad happened. Yep. That. Yeah. You, um, and I guess, you know, from, you know, like, uh, well, I guess from what I remember of high school, is like there's always different groups, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, was what, what sort of group do you, <laughs> would you say you identified with <laughs> <laughs> oh man um well I was I, I'm a bouncer um I, I was jumping around yep. I was like that ever since I started school mm. um I had you know the popular people the sporty people and then there were the, you know I don't know I wouldn't say nerds but I would say you know the creatives yeah. or the yep. people who enjoyed art I bump yeah I was around everywhere so um Sometimes it got me in trouble, yeah. <laughs> but I... In trouble in what sense? Oh, like, you know, if if someone had a thing against someone from another group, uh, yeah. they would be like, oh, wait, you're friends with them, right? So they wouldn't want to yeah, you know, talk about them anymore. in front of me yeah. or engage in me. And, oh, look, I laughed. I just went, <laughs> look, you're each to your own, you yeah. know. Um, yeah, so I think that's uh, that was a benefit thing for me when I was yeah. in high school. Um, never really got into big arguments because yep. of that, yeah. Yep. And then, um, so, uh, like, academically, like, what were you into or what? I would say average or, you know, I wasn't, you know, bad yep. and I wasn't fantastic. I was good at language. Yep. I got a few certificates here and there with languages um, and drama. Mm-hmm. I was a, I was actually selected as a drama student okay. um, in that school, which yep. is what they do. 
Um, so besides that, you know, I was average and um, I enjoyed the arts and that was it. I just, yeah, carried on high school like that. Yeah. Yep. <coughs> and then, um, so you, you mentioned, you know, you, did you have a stint overseas when you were in high school? Yeah, I went, over, uh, I went overseas in high school. I studied, um, first it was Japanese and I got to be selected. So not everyone gets to go, but um, depending on your grades and whatever you do, yep. they select you to go over. So I was luckily chosen to go over and study there for a little while. Yep. And then the second time I was studying actually Chinese and oh. uh, the basics, yep. beginners. And then I went over to China and we um, participated in a host day there and studied in the sister school that we have in China at okay. that time. Yeah. So, okay, let's talk about Japan first. Mm. So, um, so I guess, you know, uh, so w- was Japan the first time you'd been overseas or...? <laughs> Oh, actually, not long before I went to Japan with my family. And that was the first time we ever went overseas. Yep. And um, where I grew up, that was actually quite a weird thing because, you know, a lot of my friends around all, that area, yeah. well, they've all been overseas, Traveling. you know, yeah. travelers. Yep. So this was actually a big thing for me. And um, to be able to go back again by myself yep. was like a big step. Like I was kind of, you know, got the shakes and feeling yep. like, you Anxiety. know. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, let's let's talk about those two trips. So when you went with family, um, where, where did you visit? With the family, oh, you know, the tourist spots, Kyoto, Osaka. Um, we didn't actually get to stay in Tokyo that long. We only stayed on the outskirts of Tokyo. Okay. Sorry. Um, in uh, Ikebukuro, I'm not sure if you know where that is, but it's on the skirts of um, Tokyo. And we stayed there because my friend lived there and we, she offered for us to stay at her house. Oh, wow. Um, she was a primary school friend. So we got, you know, got close and we just started talking. And then, yeah, I got to, we got to stay there. Well, so <laughs> she was a, prim- a, a girl that you meant, a girl? Primary school. In yeah, primary girl. school. Yeah, yeah. And then she moved back to Japan? Or yeah, she moved back to Japan. And okay. actually now she's in Germany. She knows German. Yeah. Okay. It's insane. Yep. But anyway, at that time, yeah, I was with her and yep. her family were there and they let us stay there, which was very fortunate. Yep. Yeah. And then I guess the first time that you, you got on a plane, what, what did that feel like? like were you oh, like, it's like I was skipping... Way like all the levels of you know reaching the end of high school, then going to college, then you leave high school, uh, then you leave the house. But um, I was like, oh my god, I'm leaving the house already. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, but it was I was very excited though. I um, I couldn't sleep on the plane. I don't usually sleep on the plane, but this was because I was excited and I was studying and I I wanted to make sure I understood everything before getting there. Okay. Um, so what, what what things were you? What, were you reading like Lonely Planet or <laughs> <laughs> what were you I was looking at all my like high school, like high school, um, you know, notes, but I got sick of that like within 20 minutes and yeah. then I started reading, you know, the mangas that, that you read yep. and I was then trying to watch the TV channels or like the um, ads yep. in uh, Japanese and I f- started freaking myself out because I had no idea what they were talking about. Okay. So I kind of made myself a little bit more anxious by doing that, but yep. um yeah, no, I, I ended up enjoying more most of the experience okay. of yeah, Japan. So the second trip where you got to go by yourself, mm. where, where were you staying? Uh, second trip into China or the Japan? Into Japan. Japan. Yeah. Um, I was staying at oh, okay, okay, was it Okayama? Um, it was a place south, and it was in it was way out from the city, and it was in a country area mm. and oh. yeah it was beautiful like you guys y- you don't see this in australia like the r- i don't know if you've ever seen it but there's like these rice paddies mm. and these farm farm farmlands that y- you know they're, they're all like i don't know how to explain it like in movies when you see the big big rice fields yep. and paddy fields, go up and yeah. yeah go up and it's amazing and i that was the first time i ever saw that okay. and i'm living there i'm living in that area and it was like it was surreal. Yep. It was like a beautiful, surreal movie that I was entering into another world. And yep. yeah, it was fantastic. And, yeah. and uh, so how long, how long was that trip when you went by yourself? When I went by myself, I think it went for about four weeks. Yep. <coughs> and for me, that was long enough. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, simply because I, uh, at the time... Yeah, it was my first time to go overseas by myself. You got homesick? <laughs> yeah, got ho- I got a bit homesick, yeah. and yeah. But honestly, actually, I was living it up. I was living my, um, 
manga dream. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you read those school dra- uh, mangas and you think, oh, you know, I can't relate to that. It's not like what we do. But then over there, it was like, oh, God. I'm You're doing, actually there. I'm actually, yeah. this is what I had to do. And, this and, is what they the, did. The uniform? <laughs> yeah, the uniform. Because you don't have uniform where you're going yeah, to school. Yeah, so. they said I had to wear a uniform and I didn't have a uniform. So I, what I did was I bought I bought something which looked like a uniform. But <laughs> so it wasn't actually a uniform. But it wasn't a <laughs> uniform. And uh, I remember I had like this stripy tie and they're like, wow, that's like a real really cool t- is that your school uniform i'm like yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so and then what was that experience like when so obviously you had a host family right that would yes that you yeah. stayed with yeah um was it um i guess did you have a friend there that you know was accompanying you to school and things like that or how did that um work? yeah yeah so my, the grandparents looked after me more than the mother and father okay yeah and the next door neighbor's friend little girl she was like a little girl she yeah. was the one who was my friend so she would come next to our house and she would play with me and everything <laughs> and yeah okay. and uh because there, there was two sons that they had but they were too young to go to our high school yeah uh, so yeah high school and um so she would come with me and she would play with me a lot and yeah we got close she ended up actually on the last night i was in japan she didn't want to leave she yeah. so she slept in the same bed as me <laughs> before i left <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was so cute she was very touching okay yeah. And then um, how did it feel like going into, I guess, a f- this foreign environment, this a new school, even though it's only for four weeks? So I guess yeah. there's that element where, you know, you know it's only temporary. So whether you really love it or you really hate it, it's only temporary anyway. But yeah. But was it was it was a big shock to your system because the schooling is the schooling very different compa- over there? Oh, compared yeah. To yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, because I thought I was ready because I watched, you know, I watched all the anime, all the mangas. I was ready, you know, yeah. I knew the culture. And then I got there and I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know anything. I've only, I'm only familiar with the surroundings and, you know, the look of a school. Um, you know, you had to take your shoes off to put slippers on in the school. I didn't know that oh, you wow. had to take, yeah, you had to have slippers to go into the school. Okay. And they would keep them in the lockers. And I didn't know that. And I was like, was I meant to bring slippers with me? So then what did you do? So, so your first I day you rock up, you take your shoes <laughs> off and you were just there in socks? I walk, uh, yeah, I walked around in my – I had tights on, so okay. I just walked around in tights and they said, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I said, well, I didn't bring any slippers, slippers. with me because I didn't know. And yeah. they said, no, it's in the locker. That, and there were these little lockers at the oh, front and okay. where you en- on the entrance. And I was yep. like, oh. So I – I thought that's where you just put your shoes. And they said, yes, but there's also another one. pair of slippers, slippers in there, in there. Yeah. To, to put on after. Yeah, so I was walking around. <laughs> <with those laughs> they would have been looking on. at you going, what are you doing? Exactly. Yeah. And that was the first time I realised, okay, I got to stop thinking about anime, like thinking like I'm in an anime and I know what I'm doing because I have no idea what I'm doing. So, yeah. you know. So then did you start asking people? I started asking people. I was like, okay, so, you know, what do I do when I want this? Or, you know, um, what if I can't say this word? Or who do I go to if I need to you know have yep. any help with anything yeah um but honestly i didn't uh, i didn't really have to ask that much they were all onto it you know they were really that's one of the things i realized in japan that lots of people there are actually very like they work hard and yep. they're very very generous people so these i they didn't leave me any room to ask any questions or okay. any problems because there wasn't any i was just looked after the whole time yeah yeah and so then what so what percentage of words you were speaking would have been Japanese versus English. Oh man, um, actually, I think I spoke the most Japanese I ever had there. Uh, you know, understandably, um, probably seventy or eighty, seventy-five percent. Yep. Nah, I'm gonna say seventy-five percent. Yeah, yep. seventy to seventy-five percent Japanese. Um, no matter how bad it might have been, because <laughs> it was only like a beginner's course. Um, course. I yeah, I I just uh, tried to use it as much as I can, and I just played it into my character. You know, yep. um, at that at w- what I think in those certain times when you're unsure, if you think you're not going to be perfect, which you're not going to be, yep. you always can't take yourself too seriously. So yeah. you just got to laugh and just you know yep. use charades or something, and yep. you know people find it fun. fun. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a good way to do it. Like yeah, yeah. It really breaks down that sort of barrier because I think, um, and this is, I guess, speaking from a, like, so as a as a Chinese-looking guy, right, like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I can speak Chinese, but I wouldn't say that my Chinese is to the level where I could do business and things like that. Like yeah. I communicate with family, I can talk to my kids, and that's what my Chinese is predominantly for nowadays. Yeah. Um, but then it's like, you know, sometimes when I go overseas to China and things like that or, like, you know, Asian countries and things like that, I get very self-conscious about it. 
Oh. Because you know, like I, su- I suck myself out, and I can I can survive. Like if you put me in China, I'll I'll be fine. Like yeah, I can, I can casual care. status. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, I, I can I can order food. I can you know I know how to speak. Like I can ask for directions. I can do all that sort of stuff. Yeah, personal then, stuff. Yeah, but then if you, if but then if I had to suddenly go and get a job there and be in that working environment, and then then I'd probably get a little bit self conscious because because you can already speak. They people just assume that you know you the etiquette, you know everything, right? Yeah, but. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. No, and I um I am actually feeling that now. Yeah, um, learning my languages now. I'm at that level where I think I'm like you. And then when it comes to business or when it comes to etiquette, maybe yep. for very formal situations, mm. it's kind of like, oh no, like I haven't really practiced this at all. I'm yep. not sure if I know how to do this. Yeah, unfamiliar words, unfamiliar territory. territory yep. Yeah, and even for you, like you look like you're part of the community over yep. there. So it's hard to be like look, you know, I, I don't know everything, yeah. but, you know, if they look at me, they instantly think this is not her mother language, yeah. you know, obviously. Yeah. So, um, you know, I guess it's a bit easier for them to be like, oh, okay, that's fine. But yeah. for you, it's like, you know, yeah. <laughs> I can understand that. Yeah. 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 So, you know, it's just one of those things. But, like, I think, you know, that's a – if you if you play it off that way, it's actually a, a really good way to try and, you know, break down that sort of barrier and then people – hopefully take it a little bit easier on you. Yeah, look, I mean, in the end of the day, we're all just people and especially then we're school kids. So yeah. you meant to have fun, right? And yeah. if you don't take it, if you just laugh at everything, everyone forgets that your, you know, your, your language is a barrier, yeah. you know. Um, you probably had lots of times where you've had to like kind of just make up. But like, did you ever have anything like that where you had to like kind of, you were stuck, but you just kind of made a thing out of it or did that bring um, you closer to anyone at all? Was that... M- Mainly just like a – did that separate you from I situations think, I think, mo- like, my way of dealing with that was probably a little bit different. So, like, my way of um, – if, if there's a deficit, mm-hmm. like, a, you know, a deficit of knowledge, then, you know, to me, my phone, Google, is like, you know <laughs> – the, the, <laughs> the, yeah, no- yeah, the number yeah. one. Yeah, The number one, right? That's exactly so, right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, I'll, I'll probably go that route to try and, and – and I, and I think that's probably more of an egocentric thing, right, where – you know, if I, if I already feel self-conscious, I don't want to feel more self-conscious. So then I'll Google it or I'll look it up to, to make sure that I've got the, the right characters or the right words. Is that beforehand or um, during that time, like when, gen- when it happens? Oh, okay, so yeah, I guess generally it'll obviously try and be beforehand. Prepare every conversation before. No, all right. Okay, let, <laughs> Come on, be I'll, honest, I'll, you man. I'll, be I'll, honest. I'll, I'll tell you a funny story. Okay, okay here we go. So um, I was in China for a martial arts conference. So it was, it was a kung fu thing, right? Nice. And so as a part of that, um, we, we do like um, an exchange. So an exchange of, of pointers, ideas, you know, martial arts ideas, kung fu techniques, things like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. And um, so um, my master would obviously um, – you know, speaking Chinese. Um, most of the people would speak in Chinese. I would often be the English translator for that, right? Oh, okay. And then um, there was this one time that um, we were talking about gloves, right? The mm-hmm. punching gloves. Yeah, yeah. Pun- the yeah. The yeah. Boxing gloves, boxing right? Boxing gloves, yeah. And I used the wrong terminology. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah. So, I love this because so Chinese is like, it's yeah. so easy to mess up. <laughs> So uh, instead of saying chen tao, which would be chen like tao, yeah, yeah, it would be like fists covering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I said an, I said an chen tao, which would <laughs> in Chinese is actually a condom. <laughs> so what? <laughs> so an chen tao. Yeah. Oh wow. So, so when, I, when I said that, and I had the microphone and everything, and I'm, I'm talking, and then I was talking about wearing gloves, right? <laughs> and <laughs> the, 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 the local guy looked at me, <laughs> and he had this laugh, he smile on his face. <laughs> And he just he, he just sort of <laughs> shook his head, you know, and, and then I only found out after I'd said it. <laughs> no, so no one reacted. They were oh, just kind of people reacted. But yeah, I, yeah. I, I was just thinking, you know, because I was like in the in the moment, like trying to like quickly, focus, yeah, quickly verbalize it in Chinese. Yeah. And so I said Anchen Tao, and then <laughs> yeah. and then and then after then I then then I said uh, yeah, you don't want to say that those words together <laughs> because <laughs> it can mean a condom. And I was oh. like, oh, okay. Um, Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, like you know, that's that's a funny circumstance, and you yeah. know, um, luckily they, you know, you know, they they shoved it off a bit. Wasn't too bad, yeah. I guess. Hey? No, like they'll, they'll find about it. But it's, <laughs> yeah. it's just funny because, like, I guess for all the foreigners that were there, because like it's it's international, right? So yeah. there's like people mm. from like um, England, the US, blah blah blah. Not everyone can speak Chinese, so it was like so a setting anyway. Like yeah, kind of. Well, it's like in a conference room, and then so um, you know. Uh, so, like, because there, there, there's different levels of uh, of bilingualness, right? Like, so mm. 
there would have been, um, you know, people that would, say, be from the Philippines who obviously could speak, you know, Tagalog and then speak Chinese a little, or speak yeah. um, uh, Hokkien because we're in um, Fujian in province. Fujian, yeah. Yep. And, then, um, and then they could also speak English, but their English would only be a certain level. Right. right? Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. likewise, you know, I guess um, so for someone like me, I'm a native Eng- like I well, even though native I learned English. Chinese first, but I'm a native English speaker yeah, yeah, in that yeah. regard. So mm. they would often, you know, um, those guys could probably translate as well but because obviously they don't have the accent or whatever they're more comfortable if i was to translate type mm, of a thing. yeah so that's where it's like you know sometimes you you, you you can get yourself well in those situations you know I, I could get myself caught out where it's like okay um so part of that conference you know we'd have a competition like mm. a martial arts competition forms demonstration things like that and so i was helping to coordinate our team and so i'd go and listen to the rules and then you know, have to go and communicate that back to the team. That's a hard job. Right. Like, yeah. translating is no joke. Like, oh, you, it, It's so difficult. Yeah. Like, especially if it's like, you know, you don't know the context. Exactly. Right. And, you know, you got to make sure that also the feeling's the same, you know. Yeah. You know, if they're being strict, you make it sound strict and things yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, <laughs> so I, I'd have to do those sorts of things. And it was, um, you know, you, you, sometimes it's like you, you, you probably get, say, 70 to 80% of what's being said. But it's enough so that you can fill in the questions. Understand, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they can kind of go off what you've... You yeah. Know, the so pinpoints, you keywords, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you get paid for that? Did you get paid for translation or no, anything like no, that? Yeah, no, see, that's no. the thing. Like, everyone takes translation as like a, you know, oh, yeah, like, you know, there it's must freebie, be someone right? here yeah. that can <laughs> speak another language, right? Yeah. You know, nowadays yeah. it really is like that. Yeah. Um, especially me, I was, I was, you know, asked to do things like that as well. Yeah. And I was like... Well, you know, it actually requires a lot of professionalism and quite a lot of yeah. concentration. So yeah. it's it's not like if you can speak the language, you can just automatically just kind of go. Sometimes yeah. in casual situations, it's fine. But I feel like for like maybe companies or yeah. competitions or things like that, yeah. it can, you know, you got a lot of things to do. You got to write it down, make sure everyone's yeah. happy and yeah. everyone's in the same. And you got to like, you know, you got to <coughs> direct people because you you know they're, they're they're talking about what the agenda is and. Exactly. You know, the timing. And if you communicate that wrong, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of people that don't know. And turn jokes. Up, right? Like, you know, jokes as well. You uh, can't really translate jokes yeah. over. So jokes are very, very uh, difficult to translate. Have you ever yeah. had to translate one? Um, I wouldn't. No, I think most of the translating stuff that I've done or translational stuff I've done has all been like more formal stuff. Like, yeah. Um, not really joke wise. Um, apart from maybe like, you know, um, the occasional, you know, when you're emceeing a wedding kind of a thing so i've done uh, a couple of those sorts of gigs yeah and then you know it's hard because sometimes like um when people's parents speak in chinese or whatever and then it might be funny but then you translate it it's not funny it's anymore it's <laughs> like yeah yeah it doesn't make sense or yeah. something like that right yeah, 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 yeah so so that's 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 you sort of feel a bit awkward then because it's like you know um because they'll speak in chinese and the people that understand chinese will laugh mm. and then you translate it in english and it's not it's like, like silence. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you hear crickets, right? And it's like, oh, <laughs> oh dear. Oops. You know, sometimes I heard some translator, like professional translators, yeah. when a time comes where they actually can't translate and it won't be funny or won't be, they just say, the speaker said a joke, please laugh. <laughs> and they yeah. just, and they yeah. laugh, you know, yeah. just to give that well, courtesy. I, I, um, yeah, so there would be some like professional translators, or well, I guess university students that were s- learning English mm. from in the Chinese universities that would try and do the translation. Mm. And I, I'd really feel for them because it's like, you know, um, obviously, you know, they have a great grasp of Chinese, but their grasp of English and then some of the, you know, a little bit, yeah, the idiosyncrasies yeah. and, and that sort of stuff. Um, so, like, the translation, you know, would be a direct translation, right? Yeah. As opposed to a, you know, let's translate it into a, 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 a Summarize, cohesive Yeah, cohesive sentence. kind of thing. Yeah. 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 So it's like word by word rather yeah. than, yeah. That's another thing, like, um, translation wise, uh, I've been taught that it's essential that you bring the yeah, like what you said, you got to bring over what you know is cohesive to them and what is making sense and mm. what the language is like and you know the culture and make sure you involve everything in that. Yep. And some people have said no, look, and you've got to you got to say what's literally what they're saying because you can't you can't have any involvement in it. You have to be m- like a computer essentially. Yep. Yep. So um, a few of my friends are translators, that's why. Okay. Uh, so that's why I was like, oh, okay, like, you know, they have a bit of a riffraff over that. Yeah. And, you know, I, See, think I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do it that way. I feel like, 
Mm. But like I, I, I feel you're like in a different situation. You're by yourself, and yeah. like you know, they were they were asking you if you can, yeah. right? Like you know, yeah. so I mean, it's great that you can do it, and that was <laughs> probably lucky that you were there because I don't yeah. know who else could have done <laughs> it. But yeah, it's so a different cast. Okay, let's get let's get back to you. So, yeah. um, I wanted to ask you. So, in that uh, as when you were on that Japan exchange trip, right? Mm. Um, were there many other foreigners doing the same thing, or was it just you at the at school? That school, yeah. Just me. Just you. Yeah. So, uh, so did you stand out like a sore thumb? I sure did. I am. I can tell you, a hundred and eighty cent- centimeter tall, blonde, ish girl. Yeah. You could probably <laughs> imagine how much attention you did. Track. I ha- right? had. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I was taller than majority of the school. Um, yep. yep. <laughs> some of the teachers, wow. and uh, you know, and I was only what like thirteen, fourteen. Mm. Oh, I think I was 14, yeah. And um, I, yeah, I drew a lot of attention, as you can imagine. Um, and lots of people would, you know, ask me questions and things. And they they dragged me to their clubs. So they all have... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> they all had no, you got to tell these stories. Now, <laughs> yeah. so. All right, let's so, go. So, uh, okay. Um, one, I'll, I'll tell you a funny one. Um, I think the, I think it's like a rugby team. It was okay. like a rugby, yeah, they had rugby there. I was like, whoa, okay. Uh, AFL, something like that. And... Um, they had a club and they asked me, like, oh, look, the AFL club want to show you something. Like, that's the literal translation. Yep. So, d- can you come have a look? You know, come visit them. We're okay. like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So, I went down and went to see them. And <laughs> what they did, they, <laughs> they prepared. It was weird. It was like I was a like coach or something. They just wanted to see me, you know, them play a game. And yep. then after that, they um, wanted me to be, you know, part of it. So what they did was they threw me the ball and they said, okay, try and score a goal on the other side of the field. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> and I ran and these guys, <laughs> they they, uh, they ran and then they just jumped away. Like, I, like uh, you yeah, know, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, like stuntmen, right? Yeah. Just jumping away from me, looking like they're about to tackle, but they fall down all the way to the end of the goal and I <laughs> hit the goal and everyone's like, oh, you got it, oh, well done, and, you know, things like that. And then um, during training, they made me stand on this ledge which had um, handles and padding on it. Okay. Do you know those things which they push? Like, it's like a... Oh, yeah, like the trolley. Football the, yeah, training yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. The tackle when things. Tackle, yeah, yeah, exactly. They got me to stand on top of that, which I was like... Uh, I, I didn't. I don't know. I, I was a bit conscious about my weight at that time because okay. you know everyone's so skinny over there. So yeah. I, I was a bit like you know teenager girl, quite tall. You know I was like oh like I don't, am I heavy? Is that why they're getting me to go on this thing? Yeah. Um, but apparently not. They just wanted you to see how strong they are, and yeah. they literally had three guys on it, and, and they pushed me. Yeah, they pushed me all the way to the other end of the oval. So that was an interesting experience. And um, in baseball club, they asked me to come to make rice balls. Okay. Um, apparently. Um, a lot of girls were like, you know, if they know that you're making rice balls, for them, they'll get really excited. And they came down to pick up the rice balls. They have like a little girl, like they have a little club where they make food for the bus, uh, baseball guys okay. for snacks and stuff. Okay. And um, <laughs> they came <laughs> and they were expecting the snacks. And then I was there and everyone just crowded around and they were all trying to, you know, grab all, you know, the, the, the small snack. Yeah, yeah, onigiri. Yeah, onigiri, that's right. Yeah. Onigiri. And, um, you know, they were just going crazy over it. And I'm like, wow, this is probably like... Like when you think about it, I c- in the whole town, I haven't seen any foreigners, and yep. in a country, obviously, yeah. you know, and um, they probably, you know, this is probably like really amazing for them. But to me, it was just like, you know, some sweaty girl trying to like yeah. <laughs> make these put bad on a guri on a guri together. <laughs> oh, but they looked hideous. All the other girls were like, they're so detailed and lovely, and mine was just like half of it wasn't covered in rice. I had to like somehow push it all over. It was yeah. ugly as hell. But everyone <laughs> loved it and they came and ate. And uh, the last one would be um, music, which was my favourite. Yep. I had a favourite song. They asked me in class, there was a classmate who was in the orchestra club mm-hmm. and they asked me, you know, what's your favourite Japanese song? And yep. I said, oh, like at the time I was listening to some kip, um, some pop songs. Yep. Um, Arashi was a favourite uh, band of mine and they had a song called Love So Sweet which I loved and I used to sing in karaoke with my young friend yep. um, the girl who let yep. me stay at her house and I told them and they're like oh okay and then about two days later they said Rachel can you come down to the music room we've got something <laughs> for you and they had the whole orchestra there <laughs> they set up the whole orchestra there just to play this song um, this is so like you, and then make you sing no, 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 no. <laughs> Make me sing. Thank God, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have been able to stay there. Um, no, but they. Everyone was there. The whole orchestra, and then I just literally walked in, and they made me stand there right next to the conductor, 
while they played this song that I actually yeah. liked. And it was touching, but then I got really self-conscious because I'm like, what do I do? Do yeah. I just clap or like, you yeah. know? And yeah, what, what's the right response, right? Yeah, and I was, you know, it was great. It was like at that time I was so touched by their effort. It was like such a great thing to experience, yeah. but I just didn't know how to react. I'm yeah. like, well, what kind of reaction do they want? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like what are you supposed to do in that situation? Which, or what's the right etiquette? Right? Exactly. Like, yeah. do I si- sing along? Do I clap along? Do I like jump up and down? Do I just stand there and look grateful? Like, you know, what do you do? Yeah. So what did you do? You just, I did a mix of everything. I kind of clapped. I kind of like sung a bit yeah. and then I just kind of stopped. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, just, really I just like stopped for a little while <laughs> so I could, you know, let them play and then, <laughs> They played the whole song. Yeah. I was like, oh, they'll probably like play the chorus. And, yeah. You know, but they played the whole song and so I was like there for like four minutes basically. Yeah, four minutes. <laughs> Typical song goes for about four minutes. So yeah, and <laughs> I uh it was one of the best moments and also one of the most you know, awkward moment for me. Yeah. You know. Very um, self conscious moment. Yeah, because yeah. all eyes on me, right? And they probably mm. worked on this uh, after school hours, clubs are after school, right? Yeah. So yeah. I just wanted them to know that I felt like it was appreciated. It was yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So was it okay? Um, and I, I guess I'll tell you a story to try and get, uh, help you understand what I'm trying to get at here. But like, so when part of those kung fu trips, right? Um, I had one of the guys that was that was training with us before, um, Jeff. He's like you know big white Australian guy, right? And um, I, I I still remember you know we were at one of the comps, and um, big Jeff standing there, and all the all the kids from all these kids came crowding around. Yeah. Right. And they're looking at him, and they're like, you know, it's like because I've never seen a such a big, Tall guy. big white guy, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, and I, I was sort of having a laugh at it because it was like, you know, Jeff was like a, a celebrity, right? Right. And then it, it just got really awkward when the kids started pulling at his like arm hair. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, they were just like plucking at his arm, like just you know, oh, right. touching his you arm hair <laughs> and stuff. Right, right, right. And, 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 and Jeff was like, "Hey, what are you doing?" Like, <laughs> you know. So it was like, you know, and like for the kids, they. They probably didn't really think about it, right? Like yeah, they're just like they're I know very curious, right? So, did you have ever have any of those moments where like there was a lot of they were just curious, but then you were just like, "Wow, this is like a bit Not, yeah. uncomfortable." Mm, um, yes, actually, it wasn't. Funnily enough, it um, during it wasn't during my trip during high school mm. when I went. Um, yeah, when I went there, it was actually during my first trip to Japan with my parents. Oh wow! Um, we s- no, my own brother. I have an older brother. He's six foot five, and. Um, you know, he gets noticed everywhere, but so did I. Mm. And what happened was when we were walking past, people would ask up for our photos. Yeah. And we would just stand there thinking, you know, why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we felt very like, uh, we were like, oh, well, you know, I guess we're foreigners, you know, things like that. You know, people, people want to take photos with people. And we thought, you know, they just thought we we're interested. But I heard from... Uh, a friend of mine, my Japanese friend, saying that, you know, sometimes they like to think that you're their friend yeah. and they like to show others, oh, look at my friend, you know, yeah. and everything like that. Um, that's, yeah, that's the only time really. And my par- the, there were some school kids actually that came up to me and asked if they could um, touch my hair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, just the ends, yeah. you know. And um, I was like, sh- I at first I was a bit hesitant and my parents were like, oh, you know, it's all right, just go on, do it, do it. I was like, oh, okay. And they touched my hair and... They were like, eh, like they do that yeah, eh yeah, thing yeah. and they were like all touching, like, yeah. oh my God, oh my God. And I didn't understand what it was at the time, but it's because our, my hair was thin. Like our strands, okay. our hair, like strands are very thin. So yep. they, apparently they're feeling for that. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that, okay. Yeah. That's kind of something I had. <laughs> and uh, in China too, fight, like everyone was taking photos and things yep. like that. Um, my friend who was sitting next to me, who's Australian man, um, white guy, yep. he was sitting there, you know, turned towards me and we were just kind of eating, talking, and then he was on his phone. A Chinese girl came, sat down and, you know, got quite close to him and then like leaned in, took a photo with her and him and then ran away. And he had no idea the whole what time. What was going on? Yeah, no, he had no idea. He yeah. didn't know he was just taking a photo of. The girl okay. just literally just took a photo and, and ran. ran. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's really awkward. <laughs> yeah, that was super. And I was just like trying to like figure out, oh, what should I do? Should I just tell him? But she, she was gone within a blink of an eye. Right. So yeah. I was just like, you know. Wow. Wow, yeah. do we have to actually be aware of this? Like, yeah. do we have to have, yeah, it was a bit awkward. And okay. um, especially when we were with family, we had to go to different tourist sites and people would ask, can you touch your hair and everything? I was like, okay, that's a bit, like, no, <laughs> uh, we need to get somewhere. We're quite busy, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You got this crowd of, <laughs> crowd of people trying to touch your hair. Yeah, yeah, well, school girls, school <laughs> girls mainly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just weird <laughs> situation. All right, well, bef- let, we'll talk about China in a sec. Uh, mm. what the, other, the other thing I wanted to ask you about Japan was um, food-wise. So, 
how exposed were you to, I guess, Japanese food and Japanese culture before you, before your your trips there? So um, obviously, you would have ate some with your family and things like that when you yeah. went. Yeah. Um, what was it like? Yeah, the difference. The difference was I always associated sushi mainly and bento boxes with um, Japanese food. Mm -hmm. When I got over there, I had okonomiyaki, I had like all these other things, mm. skewers and um, fish yakiniku. and broth and yep. yakiniku and yep. all that. And I was like, what? Like this was very, like I thought it was very plain. Yep. Like, because usually the restaurants here are like that, you know, you have yep. rice and then you have something on top. Yep. Um, that was my understanding of it. And then when I went over there, I was like, oh, what? There's like this, there's that. Yeah. There's like these things here and then. It's so creative and so interesting. Yeah. My um, host parents, they actually, uh, they like, yeah, they made fish for me, grilled fish. And yeah. they actually have a little thing for that over oh, there. Wow, like okay. every kitchen in Japan has like a little grill above the oven. And that's a very okay. small grill and it's only for fish. Oh, so they have okay. that like nearly every day and it's like a small mackerel thing but yeah i didn't know they did it. and it's lovely and they make it they cook it with like certain oils and spices so it yep. tastes so much better and yeah um definitely changed my outlook on japan's food i actually preferred Jap japanese food when, when i came there. back oh yeah. when you came back so yeah. it changed your taste buds really yeah, yeah uh my flavor was like i don't want you know, veggies and meat. Like, I don't want, like, a steak and <laughs> yeah. veggies. Like, that seems so plain to me. Like, I was like, that's I don't want that. I want, like, you know, mixes of everything, yeah. you know. And did, yeah. did your parents, were your parents, did your parents notice a change in you after you'd done that trip? Um, I'll say, I don't know, maybe. Uh, they knew my Japanese was better. <laughs> well, I like to hope so, right? <laughs> I like to hope so. Um, but I think... I think I stayed pretty. It, was, it wasn't long enough, I think, for me to completely like, yep. like my, to change. But I think I picked up, um, like a few habits. You know, wanting to take box lunches with me mm. was something I loved. Opening my be like my bento box at yep. the time and finding all these lovely, you know, things inside. Things yeah. inside. It's <laughs> like a little treasure box, you know. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> and like the sausages shaped like o like octopuses. Yep. It was fantastic. It was like, oh my god! Yeah. Like this is my dream. It's the attention to detail, right? Like, yeah. It's just so many of those little things that you. You know, it's you take for granted, right? Exactly. And she, uh, the mother that prepared those, got up at like six in the morning to prepare them so yeah. that we can get up and leave and just pick them up and go. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And I was like, oh, mom, I really want to do this. And she's like, okay, but with what? With like sandwiches? And I'm like, no. Um. <laughs> and it, there's actually a lot of work into it. And yeah. yeah. And so naturally, I I tried to be a bit more creative while putting my lunches together. So yeah. Um, you know, so that I didn't go and buy stuff and, you know, yep. just waste money on food. Um, but yeah, that's the only really thing that kind of changed. Um, okay. but also friends, I made new friends and yep. I have pen pals as well. So, I okay. yeah. So, um, so would, like, hang on. So the pen pal thing to me is like really antiquated, right? Because, you know, you send emails, now we can even FaceTime, like. Exactly. So um, the, well, the, the Japan, like. Japan has a lot of like, um, I don't know, they're really into stationery okay. and they really love pens and they have lots of cute envelopes and things like that. So these guys were really into, you know, penship and mm. wanted to write notes and practice their writing and everything like that. I think that's one of the main reasons they wanted to practice writing, you know, okay. and they did it so nicely and um, it only lasted for a couple of weeks and then it stopped. But yep. um, it was nice to kind of have that, yep. you know. That's still that connection. That connection and yep. it's nice to have a letter to open, you know. Yep. With and people. something tangible that you can always go back to. Exactly. And also I didn't really give them, I didn't really use my email back then. I didn't ha really have an email um, and if I did, they didn't really ask for it. They asked for like yep. where address. I love address. Yeah. 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 Fair yeah. enough. Okay. So then, um, how much time was there between that, the Japan trip and then the China trip? So. Oh, like four years later? Four years later. <laughs> oh, wait, no. Oh, how old was I? Yeah. Eight. Yeah. Like three years later, four years later. Yeah. 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 And then what, so how did that come about? China <laughs> trip? Um, so I, that's okay. Complete a little bit complicated but i um started doing chinese because i did i started taking interest in um korean language but that wasn't really part of our curriculum so i just went straight into chinese because okay. i always had a fascination with their characters and everything and i wanted to know i wanted to learn how they can make sense of such a complex character, character right yeah. um and so then i went into that and then um our classroom was invited to go to Jin, to Jinshang, I think that was the name of the school. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, whoever could go can go. And we ended up staying over there and, yeah, to our sister school and meet everyone um, and learn Chinese while we were over there as well. So yep. it was less it was less selective, yep. um, but it was just for our school, for okay. our class. Yeah. So how, how many people went, went to that? Roughly, I would say maybe 10. Okay. 10, yeah, 11, 10. Yep. Yeah. And then, and then, like, I guess what sort of backgrounds were the other people? Were they... Like, like you know, yeah, Anglo, Anglo most of them Anglo. Anglo. Most of them were Anglo, and we had a Korean guy, and a Korean two guy. Korean guys okay. actually. Yeah, one was um American. Oh, what? Yeah, where, American hey, Korean. Uh, yeah, where, where he, did he come from? He <laughs> 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 look actually, we have we had a lot of we, we were very multicultural in our school. Um, we've had people from everywhere. We had Chinese students staying at our school, um, like you know. And um, we had Americans, we had everyone everywhere. And um, this kid was from America. They just moved to Australia, yep. and he's Korean descent. And he was studying Chinese as well. Yep. They were all their level was higher than me, um, yep. but uh, we all were put in the same class. Yep. So we all went together. And he was there, and and a, and a Korean Korean guy was there. Um, what, what I mean by Korean Korean is like he he lived in Korea and then moved to Australia and then yep. yeah. Okay. And then so did you <coughs> so so. That fascination with the characters and things like that, like mm. where do you think that came, came from? from? Yeah, uh, I've always liked drawing. I'm very like I loved art. I was really into like um, animation as well, and I always just loved looking at beautiful things. Like I really appreciated um, drawings and animation and art and just anything really. And I was drawing myself, and I became quite. You know, I became like uh, quite uh, into it, mm-hmm. and so when I looked at Chinese characters, I thought in language that was like the art, f- like that was like a very beautiful way to depict a language, like to look at a language. Mm-hmm. You know, and because it was so complex, I just I I wanted to figure out, you know, how can yeah, how, how, can how does what's the principles? Of how it's put together exactly, yeah. and even in Japanese, it's a bit phonetic. You know, you yeah. can kind of put everything together, but Chinese, it's completely <laughs> just yeah. no show, right? Yeah. Um. So yeah, that was and yeah, that was it. That was all I. That's all that's kind of triggered that. I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's 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 talk a little bit th- about that because it's like you know it's funny because you know if if you were a native Chinese speaker and then you're trying to learn English, you, you you're sort of the same way where you go, hmm, how's this language put together because you know, there's words in English like flammable and inflammable, which mean exactly the same thing, right? <laughs> yeah. So, like Man, English is hard. Like, <laughs> for anyone who's studying English as a second language, like, I can totally see why it's so difficult. Like, none of our things make sense. Like, mm. you know, silent Gs, we have silent E, yeah. I, S, T, H. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's interesting because, like, when I, when I um, was learning, like, I was attending Chinese language school here, mm. um, I, d- I didn't learn the Hanyu Pinyin version, so I didn't learn the where you know nowadays most Chinese is taught with um, I guess you know English letters to oh the Pinyin yeah, 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 yeah. to enun- an- enunciate yeah. the words. Um, I learnt it with the Bopo Morpho, which is like the Chinese the traditional Chinese alphabet. Right? Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. So that's so for me, uh, it was v- like and so and it, I guess you know um, the way that even when um, my parents. Um, my name in for my birth certificate and things like that like there's it doesn't follow the pinyin <laughs> at, all. at all right like <laughs> 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 i was like hmm, how, how, how did you come up with that but anyway it's, it, my mom was like oh it's just how it sounds right yeah 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 yeah. But yeah so but now like there's like a, a bit of a system to um how you know the word uh, the the pinyin is versus you know how you pronounce it um, it's 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 complex. Like uh, you have to learn how to pronounce p- pinyin. Yeah, right. It's that's right. So that, 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 I think that's that's actually a bit of a trap. Like I I, I can understand. Like and I'm, I'm guessing there's probably like a, a motivation there from um you know when the when the Chinese government you know put that into effect right like where you know by doing this then more people will internationally know, will yeah come will in. know you know um you know uh, uh, English characters yeah and so theoretically by knowing the English characters perhaps you can now speak English yeah unfortunately <laughs> because the way that you pronounce some of those collections of uh, I guess you know letters um, different that's hence yeah. why you have such there's, there's such a strong accent with it that comes with it now right yeah like uh, you know um, I, I've actually come across this while trying my parents you know they get curious and ask me you know how do you pronounce this and that and I've realized I write the opinion for them but then I realize they're still pronouncing it wrong. Yeah. And I'm just like, you know, okay, no. And I realise, oh, like, you know, these words, I- they're in English, but, you know, still there is that 
pronunciation pronunciation which you know they're missing and you actually have to go through a class to be able to you know get used to pronouncing them that yeah, that. Um, yeah so totally understand you there yeah. it's well, um, like the one uh, a very simple example that i just thought of right is you know when we say heart so sing right sing yeah yep. so in pinyin it would, it would be spelt uh, x-i-n right <laughs> yeah. and so but you know if you think about it phonetically right you'd, you'd probably not not <laughs> use an x right <laughs> no. because um because yeah they have different they yeah. th- have different like sh sounds yeah probably, and s- sounds and yep. you know if you look at a c you know it, oh can right yep. but in chinese that's san yeah. or something like that <laughs> yeah. and it's like what yeah. like that's an s it's that's like right. oh you know <laughs> okay so um so when you so you went over there with with 10 other students yep um how long was that trip for that trip was for um i think that was also for about a month or so yeah i think that was about a month and we were left again with our host day parents and families Mm -hmm. and we had to go to school every day um and it was it was there were some things which were similar in in japan you know you have to clean the classroom Mm -hmm. um slippers but the things that were different, there was like exercises in the morning that we had to do. You know, yeah. like it was it was weird. It was like I was in a like an army base or something. Yeah. <laughs> we had our track suits. Um, all school uniforms over there are like a track suit, right? Yeah. They get a jacket or a shirt, and yeah. then they just wear track pants, and yeah. then that's the uniform. They can wear whatever shirt underneath or whatever. And I was like, yeah. wow, this is very like a casual, yeah. laid back kind of uniform. Yeah. And uh, in the morning do our exi- like do the stretching exercises and stuff and then we go to class and they get sleep they get rest time sleeping time and then i think there's like a dinner time as well because okay. they stay there till quite late so yep. they have yeah like a dinner section so um yeah it was very strange it was still very strange you know yep. and so the classes that you would attend were obviously all conducted in chinese <laughs> all conducted in chinese um Oh, I have to think about this. Yeah, conducted in Chinese. Uh, we sat in on a history, like a Chinese history thing, and then we sat in on an English lesson, which was hilarious. Okay. <laughs> um, they got us to stand up and speak a uh, phrase in, in yep. English, and people would stand up and try and pronunciate it like wha- Words, how we yeah, did it. Yeah. Um, and then they made us pronu- like uh, speak really fast, as fast as we can. Yeah. And then a kid got up, and he was amazing. He had an accent yeah. obviously but he went just as fast as us and okay. it was pretty like astounding that these kids even though you know it's not pronunciated the right way or might not be exactly the same they just whizzed through it like that that's how hard they i think they you know had to study over there and i think they get pushed a lot more than japanese students mm. um with study yeah uh but that's just from my perspective yeah. right like yeah. uh, i don't know specifically if they uh, if they are being pushed, pushed more, more but um yeah. Yeah, that was my first kind of impression on yep. the school. Okay. And then was there any – did you have any, like, cultural shock moments um, while you were there? Cultural shock. Uh, yeah, a few. Um, some of them were outside of school. I actually had lots of grandmas and older people would push in line or push in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, hey, I was uh, – oh, like, first few times I was like, okay, you know, whatever, you know. And then it was like a constant thing, and yeah. I and I didn't get, I didn't understand whether it was because I was foreign, yeah, if I was a girl or if I was young, yeah, and I couldn't figure it out, <laughs> and so I just decided to get angry. So yeah. I just, I was like, you know what, I'm not gonna let them push in. So yeah. when the when someone tried to push in front of me, I just like push them out, pu- push them out with my arm, yeah, and they look back at me like in complete shock, and I'm like, you know, yeah, I said, I said no, like in yeah. in, um, I think I said. <laughs> because I, <laughs> because I didn't know. I, I was like, you don't know how else to verbalize. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, I was like, boo. And I'm like, what do you like now? I'm like thinking about it. I'm like, oh god, you know, <laughs> typical foreigner. But like, um, yeah, they just uh, they they looked at me and then they you know stood there for a little while, waited, and then they pushed into someone else behind me. Yeah. So yeah, you know, at least, at least <laughs> you stood your ground. Look, yeah. and, and it, it wasn't any of those things. They don't discriminate. They just they, they, there is no structure, right? Like yeah, the the concept of um. A cue, yeah. even though there is words for it in Chinese, like pai tui, right? Yeah, it yeah, doesn't, really, <laughs> doesn't really exist. Exactly. So. And uh, it was just, it, yeah, that's one of those times where I was like, is this a cultural thing? Like, yeah. is this something I'm missing? Because yeah. I think this is pretty rude, like whatever. Yeah. Um, second time, um, what was it? Um, oh, God, driving. 
<laughs> oh my god! I got into the car of my mother's car, yeah. and she went off, and you know, going off, and then it turned into a four lane road mm. going one way, right? Mm. This was like peak time, mm. so those four lanes that were going in one direction became three lanes going the other direction, mm. and everyone was just like meshed together. One lane, the one lane which was going forward, uh, just ended up going into the three other lanes which were going behind like going the opposite direction and i just remember her swerving in between all these cars yeah. and these cars are meant to be going that way they're meant to be going the same way but they don't care they're just trying to get yeah, through whatever. right get yeah. through the traffic and i freaked out i thought like because she was going pretty fast yeah and over there i guess they're very you know it's casual we're like whatever yeah. you know yeah. and everyone goes about you know oh you know not everyone, but I feel like there's like a general um, stereotype where people like, oh, you know, the Asians are kind of crazy drivers. Yeah. And um, I I didn't really think that, but I was starting to be like, oh, like I, I <laughs> maybe maybe this is why. Yeah. But to me, actually, I think they're actually quite they're great drivers because <laughs> to be able to drive and stuff like that, you know, that's <laughs> that's pretty amazing. And, no, you know, no, not, not many people from what I've seen – uh, have ever or heard of in newspapers or anything get hurt through the you know through the rush I think through the well I think it's re- relative like percentage of the population right yeah so I think you know th- the because there's so many more people yes there pro- there are probably more accidents mm. but in terms of the probably the relative percentage it's probably the same right and exactly. then because there's so many more people there's so many other things to report on it probably doesn't really get it reported. doesn't matter so yeah and it, it's not a huge yeah. crisis compared to you know maybe something else yeah. So, yeah, that was something which I kind of ended up thinking about later on and thinking, yeah, you know what, you know, it's, it's, it, at that time it was shocking and I couldn't, I didn't know what to do. I was like paralyzed. But now, thinking about it now, it's, it makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, did you find that um, some of the language skills that you developed from Japan, at least in terms of the characters and things like that, did that help you with Chinese? Little, <laughs> I because I, for me, kanji was like the thing that I tried to avoid because oh, it was okay. very very difficult. Yeah. Um, apart from like you know the very simple ones, which mean you know the week, daytime, nighttime, mm-hmm. um, things like that, and and um, food or like you know just basic ones I understood, which did help me a little bit in Chinese. But everything else, there's so many characters in Chinese, you know, that were um, I had to learn from scratch. Mm. So uh, I would say, yeah, a little basic, okay. like for beginners level, I yep. did think, oh, you know, I knew a few. Okay. So then um, did you, do you feel like you learnt more in that classroom style setting or did you have to sort of work out your own sort of system <coughs> of how you read the characters and things like that? Yeah. So um, I am a very hands-on person. I would rather learn it through situations mm. and uh, I tend to just remember it through that. So I, at the time, danced at a studio for quite a long time and I ended up teaching there, but I was dancing there for quite a bit and a lot of the students were also Chinese. Mm-hmm. And I hung out with them and, you know, sometimes they spoke Chinese to each other mm-hmm. and I'd over here and I'd try to understand the patterns and Wait, I... Was that here or overseas? Oh, no, here. Oh, in, okay, in Australia. In Australia. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I did that and I also kind of started trying to get my voice in on the conversations a little, uh, that, you know, (laughs) I, um, they would laugh and then I would laugh, but then I would try and continue it, you know? Um, and yeah, that worked out for me. They're actually very, they were very, very supportive and, uh, they taught me slang stuff that I probably shouldn't know, but do you know, um, you always got to start with swear words with language. So the first thing that everybody learns in a foreign language is swear words. Exactly. How to cuss someone out. Yeah. (laughs) And like, it's exciting to be able to be like, oh, I said something that no one else understands. Um, yeah. And that's how it started. And then when I, when I went to the school in China, um, they, yeah, they they would talk to me mainly in uh, English. Yep. So they're they trying w- to do the opposite to you. They're trying to improve their English. Yeah, that's the problem, yep. right? When you yep. do the inter um, like international partner thing, yep. you both want to practice. The, both of the schools say you can practice your language on each other, mm. but then it's when you get to that point where like, okay, which level? Like how how much of this should we say, and then how much like yep. of each language should we use? You know, use, but. Um, Unfortunately, I feel maybe the Australian students took advantage of that and just try and speak as much English as they could. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard. Like I think you know, if you if if you to make the most of that situation, you really have to make a conscious effort. 
yeah. to not try mm. and um, go back to, you know, what you're used to. Yeah, and uh, especially when they speak so well, you yep. know, you think, oh, you relax, right? Yeah. And to me, I think uh, through these school programs, so not not the scholarship or the ones where you actually have to apply for to go overseas, which I did the first time for Japanese, um, the ones in school, I feel like it's more like uh, – I feel like the students – that I went with felt it was more like a vacation, mm. a holiday. They treated like a holiday, not a learning experience. So they got to experience the culture and things yep. like that, but they just they were either too shy or yeah. too self-conscious. Self-conscious, exactly. There yep. we go. Um, well, at the language that they just couldn't, you know, talk <laughs> yeah. in Chinese or practice. Um, but then again, you know, I I could be wrong. Maybe someone did, but yep. for my yeah, I I don't I don't think I would say they prena- really did more practice in Chinese than the others did in English. Yep. You know? yeah. yep. Okay. So then after the after the China trip, so then what was the what was the timeline for you? <sighs> That's where it gets a bit um crazy. So I year twelve was my last year and I think that's when the Korean language started you know, start I started learning Korean language in the city. Okay. And there so was that was completely separate to high school. Completely se- separate. So okay. I uh, this was actually free. Oh. So it, you can learn Korean language at a Korean culture office, and you just need to okay. become a member, and then it's free. I, and didn't, I didn't know that. It yeah, it's well, there. You go. Shout it, out to the Korean. Culture <laughs> shout out office. to Kore- Korean culture <laughs> office. <laughs> um, they used to be called um, the yeah KCO, but they're called like KCC now. I think Korean Culture Center. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, and all you had to do was they'll, they'll supply you the books, the sheets that you need. Yep. Um, you just need to be a member and come in on every Thursday or whichever class that you've yep. been enrolled in. Yeah. And that's that. And okay. it was fantastic. Um, only problem is there are people there who didn't, obviously didn't study or didn't like yep. do it, but they, they dropped out because you have to do a, like a test and then the teacher has to approve you to go into the next level. Okay. So it still acted like an academy. Yep. Um, so yeah, I went there, learned Korean, basic Korean there, hung out with a lot of Korean people at the um, dance studio as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it was in, it's in the Chinatown area, so mm-hmm. that's why there was a lot ah, of sense. yeah mixed, Crossover. Yep. yeah. And um, my Korean became just more and more, it just increased in fluency, mm-hmm. and so uh, I was very, you know, I was standard with um, basic conversation. Mm. And then I went to, and then about when I was 16, I went to Korea to actually go to the university. No, that's not right, is it? It's going to be when you're 16 because you're still living in high school, right? What was I doing when I was 16? I thought I was 16. Um, 16, no, no, I was 16. 16, 17. I went to do a course in the university, in Yonsei University. Uh, you don't have to be a certain age to apply. Um, you ha- oh, you definitely have to be over like, f- I'm guessing tw- 15. Yeah. I was like the minimum. Um, oh, hang on, hang on. Sorry, I think I've, I've, I've messed up the timeline a bit. I'm trying to think. No, no, no. Okay, 16, I went over to Korea for the first time. Okay. But then when I went to do the Yonsei thing, I think I was like 17 and I was coming on to 18 years old. Yep. And they um, and I studied there for about three months. Mm-hmm. And um, I then ended up, actually, that's how I ended up going back to Chinese again. So I ended up in China and then oh, I came. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So back. this is, this is going <laughs> to be a bit complex. So okay. just a big bit of a warning. <laughs> okay. So, okay. <coughs> so the first time you went to Korea, what was that for? So I went there to study for three months. Okay. And that was for, through a um, language program which they offer at Yonsei University. Mm-hmm. And so I went there, did that. Yep. And lots of opportunities opened for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I um, I got to you know go join a dance like a busking dance team. Okay, so street street performing basically. Yeah, and uh, busking is a big thing over there. Yep, more so um, than Australia, I think. Yep. Australia has lots of like um, singers, you know, yeah, on the street individuals, but not really street performance. No street performance, no yep. dancing groups. So uh, where I was staying in Hongdae at the time in Seoul. Um, there's it's famous for busking and there were dance groups which were quite popular over there. You saw quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And these dance groups I ended up joining because I I think I what happened was I came across them um, and uh, I watched them like quite a bit because mm-hmm. I found it really entertaining. Yeah. 
And then I was st- uh, when I was there, I was staying at a host like a guest house. Yep. And um, the people who run the place had these um, Chinese uh, interviewers who wanted to interview the ch- the guest house. Yep. And the guest house owner, who I was friends with. Uh, suggested that I should take them down to look at the busking, the dancing. Okay. So that's what we did. And then after I showed them the dance busk, the, the buskers, the guy who does the dance um, busking, he's the head guy. He, uh, we called him the director. Yep. So when the director um, <coughs> saw us at the end of the filming, he came up and asked us, "Oh, what's this all about?" and yep. everything. And then he asked me, "You know, can you dance?" And I said, "Yes." And he said, "Well, why don't you come over to the studio one time, <laughs> and we'll, you know, yep. and see, see what you can do." Yeah, yeah, see what you can do. So I was very touched by that. Very exciting. Yeah. Um, and I did. I ended up going over, and uh, he really liked my like he liked my dance, and yep. everyone was really you know welcoming. And yep. they said, "You know what?" And he he said, "I'll do you a deal. You can join our little dance team every two days a week. Um, but you got to let me take photos, like do some modeling shots in their merch that they have. Yep. And I said, sure, why not? Yep. <laughs> and uh, so I had like T-shirts and hats and badges and, you know, things like that, which th- they wanted to take photos of and I did it. And then I ended up joining the team I and like while I was there. Yep. Yeah, it was great. And we did loads of shows together. I remember running from like language class to the straight away to the location where they're busking. So, you know, to join in on the dancing. And um, I think now I've realized it's, it's, you know, because it's busking, we get money from it. Right. Um, I didn't take any of the money, obviously. Um, I just did it for fun. So (laughs) I think they got got a bit of a... You got the raw end of the deal. (laughs) Yeah. Because then you're also modelling their merch and... Yeah. It's fun, right? It was. And I was happy to end up in that community anyway because I met lots of people, like genuine Koreans that probably they weren't part of an English program or anything like that. They Mm -hmm. were just, you know, every day. And, um, yeah, we got close. Until this day, I'm still friends with them. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Okay. So mm-hmm. then... Um, and then how I ended up in China, I think, yeah. was the point. Okay. So this is the complicated part. I, when I was there, I um, was given a contact. Mm-hmm. And this contact was given to me because the person knew that I was, you know, in Korea. I knew Korean to a basic level. I could dance and, um, you know, this and that. And... They and this person was looking for a foreigner to participate in a TV show. Oh, okay. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Right. <laughs> and so this is when it starts. So I ended up, I actually um, had to reject this offer. I rejected this offer four times. Wow. I didn't want to go. I was like, oh, you know, I don't really want to be in a you know TV Very reality show. <laughs> And I didn't really know what it was about. I was just kind of like, yeah, I don't know. And then um, I, you know, put it off because it's raining and it's on the other side of the city and yip, yip. And then one day I was like, they're like, please, like, you know, can you please just come Come, in? Because we would really like... Like to meet you. Yeah, like to meet you. Just meet you if that's possible. I was like, okay, all right, I'll come. And so I came. I was in track pants, just finished my class. <laughs> Hair's messy, it's, you know, and humidity made it all fuzzy. No makeup, nothing. Came in. And it was in Gundam, mm-hmm. the studio, and I didn't realize how you know, th- you know, Gundam's like the big district. It's where all the entertainment companies are yeah. and everything like that. So it's a big deal. So when I got there, everyone was beautiful, and I was just like, whoa, like everyone's yeah. dressed so nicely, you know. Um, and got in there, and they, yeah, they talked to me. They introduced themselves, and I had. To, it was like a simple audition. They wanted me to dance around the camera. They wanted yeah. me to introduce myself. In Chinese or Korean? In Korean. Okay, in Korean. And uh, they asked me, do you know any Chinese? I'm like, like, yeah, like beginners level from like high school, you know? Yeah. And um, they said, okay, cool. And then that was it. They took photos, talked to me a little bit. And uh, they said, okay, well, we'll let you know how it goes. And they gave me a a, um, booklet with what the TV show is about. Yep. And this TV show was called Birth of a Star. So, um, excuse my pronunciation, but I think it's Ming Xing de Dan So, um, Birth of a Star. Yeah. yeah. And um, <laughs> and I read it and I realized this is located in China. Yeah. Not Korea. Yeah. And they're speaking Chinese. Not, not Korean. Not Korean. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, what have I 
got myself into. And uh, <laughs> I thought, you know what? Doesn't matter. You yeah, know. you may not get in, right? Might not get in yeah. at all. And um, I thought, nah, like a white person doesn't know Chinese. Like they want someone like that. Yeah. However, um, <laughs> of course they want someone like that. <laughs> of course they want someone like that. <laughs> oh, and uh, that's when it all began. So after my studies, mm. I, I actually got a certificate mm. and I came back to Australia. And then they told me that I got through and they would like to see me. And the interview is going to be placed in Beijing. Mm. So I was like, oh, gosh, okay. Um, and they said, actually, you're going to be um, representing the Korean side. So this is com- okay. so this TV show is going to be a mix of Korean and Chinese contestants. Yep. So I was like, oh, okay, that sounds really cool. That sounds really interesting. Yep. Um, so fortunately enough, I was going over to Shanghai because I was in a dance group, and they were asked to come and do like a like a performance mm-hmm. in Shanghai, and um, this was through the group, not through me. Yep. And so we went over there, did it, have a bit of vacation as well. It was yep. fun. And then they, the um, company then uh, asked me to come down to Beijing. They got me a ticket. I went, flew down, had yep. the interview. Um, I had to stay there for like two days. Yep. And then I flew back. Mm-hmm. And uh, after that, I met uh, – sorry, during that time, I met the Korean – company director so he's the guy who's who owns the korean um branch of this company who are putting on this tv TV show show. and he's yeah and then that's when he said look his english is very good so he said look you know you you're going to be our representative Mm -hmm. if you get through this next interview for the tv show and um i really think you enjoy it blah 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 yeah i was like oh my god like what's going on what's going on and i was like really i didn't know what to do with myself but i just went with it because i thought you know i'm not doing anything that strange yet you know it's just an interview yeah it's It's fine yeah see how we go (laughs) it's tv um, and then I went back and then I was told that I passed and that I'll be going into the show. Yep. And then um, I returned back to Australia and they said that I have to live stream. I have to start live streaming. Okay. And live streaming meant I had to turn on, you know, the app that they would give us to launch the live stream through to get a following, to gain an audience. Yeah. Um, I did that and I don't think I was getting anywhere because I spoke English a lot of the time yep. and I just thought, oh, like, you know, I'll probably just be like the last ranked person yep. that gets through. But um, I started using more Chinese, m- more Chinese, like Chinese that I knew at the time. Yep. And uh, yeah, I just, I got up there and then they ended up going, um, wow, I'm in the top 100. I think they said the top 100 get to go through. Yep. And uh, uh, that took a couple of months. Like, yep. So what would you do on the live stream? You just Live stream really wise, I just, yeah, they want you to entertain, right? So uh, I, I danced. Yep. I showed them my dancing. I spoke Chinese. I spoke Korean. Yep. I, they also like you to sing, but I wouldn't say I'm a singer or anything. Yep. Uh, they wanted me to sing um, Chinese songs, so I actually had to learn. Like, I just Chinese learned songs. something yeah, easy. Yeah. So <laughs> which song did you learn? <laughs> oh, God. It was like a very simple um, and very slow, I think. Um, do you know da, uh, Fang Da Tong? Yeah, Fang Da Tong. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I I I yo yeah, yeah okay. that, I learned that song okay. I I I I think the name of it yeah. um is and so I learned that again 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 yeah. I just did that song because yeah. <laughs> that's all I knew yeah. and um yeah and then I got through uh I, I showed them Sydney you know I showed th- I showed the viewers Sydney and what we do what's a what's we life do like? every day yeah, yeah it's like think of it like a vlog yeah so I did that kind of style because I thought that was easiest thing for yeah. me to do. And they enjoyed that. They loved looking at, you know, Sydney and different life yep. and everything. And then I got through and then I was flown to China and that's when the TV show started. So, hang on. So, throughout this process, right, what, what did your parents say to you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I'm, like, yeah, um, I'm back. I'm back. And then, oh, hi, hi mum. Like, yeah. yeah can I'm you say hello? <laughs> yeah. uh, they were very shocked. Um, but I was, my mum, when I was overseas, she'd constantly call me, yeah, check, uh, on, check on me, how yeah. am I doing? Um, I even went through, when I was in Korea, I, I uh, oh, this is embarrassing. Um, 
I'm not sure if I want to say this, but okay. I <laughs> Of course you want to say it. Yeah, of course I'll say it. <laughs> um, so what happened was I was, I would constantly leave my bag next to the dance area yep. outside with the buskers. Yep. And I um, picked up my bag after the performance and I said goodbye to everyone and went back home. And I realized that my wallet wasn't in there. Oh, no. And I like I got home and I, you know I put the yeah. bag down and then I was like looking through it and I'm like wait where's my where's my wallet yeah and I looked around my bed because I live because I lived in a guest house it was just like a bed we yeah. only had a bed with like a curtain mm. and then that was it and yeah. then everything else is shared so I thought oh wait maybe someone from the host the guest house got something yeah so I was looking around looking around asked the staff if they saw anything they said no so <sighs> it was quite late it was getting late and um, I was getting more and more worried. Yeah. So I it was about nine o'clock, mm. nine thirty, and I went to my one of the <laughs> Korean my Korean friends that were at the guest house as well. I woke him up. <laughs> he was asleep. Yeah. <laughs> he knew English well, so yeah. I so you felt comfortable to to tell him, him and yeah. yeah, and in detail, right? Yeah. And so he was asleep, and I woke him up, and I felt bad, but I'm like, I need I need to find this wallet, and he's like, okay, well, when was the other time you like when did you last Lisa, have it? Yeah. And I said, oh, well, you know, the performance. He's like, okay, well, let's go down and try and see if it's there. We went down, wasn't there. And um, he then took me to this little police cube, like a little police station. Yep. But it's like a very small one in the middle of Hongdae. Yep. Actually, I think it was called the tourist police. <laughs> like, okay, <right. laughs> like yeah. if you're a tourist, go to this the police. The tourist police. <laughs> they yeah. made it very obvious. Yeah. So I was like, okay. Went here and we spent, and I spoke to about five policemen. They were like really thinking, wow, so it got stolen? Yeah, I think so. And they're like, wow, like that's never happened here before in Korea. <laughs> like this is really not, wow, I'm so sorry. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. I'm like, and then as the time was going by, I'm, I was doubting myself more and more like, oh God, oh God, it better be lost because if it's not lost. Yeah, then and then you put all these people through. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, wait, is it lost? <laughs> you know, I was dying, really doubting myself. And then... We had we waited and my friend had to go and so I was there by myself and then more more police came and they said oh you know we'll take you let's go to the area and look at the area and see yeah. what happened so I took in there looked at it and they said well you know what we've got a camera right up there so we should be able to see whoever picked up the wallet, wallet. yeah and so I thought oh okay so I thought okay they'll take me back to the small little tur um, tourist police station but what happened was when I got back they had a car there. And the police car was from the real police station, like the big one, that and uh, the the original one. And they said, "Here, we'll drive you back. We're gonna drive you to the <laughs> real the one, station, the yeah. actual police station." And I was like, "Oh no!" And so I went into the car and I thought, "You know what, Rachel? It's fine. You know, you're worried. This is normal. Don't don't worry. <laughs> they just want to help you." Yeah. Um, and I went went to the station. Everyone was like, "What the hell is a foreigner doing here?" Yeah. Like everyone was freaking out. Like yeah, and everyone <laughs> was just like looking at me, like you know, uh, you know, I could understand at the time what they were asking. They were saying, you know, what? Why is a foreigner here? Why is a foreigner? And um, I handed in um, a thing saying, you know, I lost so oh, my wallet yeah. at Hongdae, and then I left. They drove me back. And then it was about <laughs> 12 or something and I felt really bad because I went and got everyone through this problem. But um, I got home and I thought, you know what, look, it's good that you did it because if they do find it, then it, you know, yeah. you've done it. You've done the precautions. Um, I went to grab my suitcase, which was under my bag, and I saw my wallet. Oh, no. <laughs> you had it there all along. It was behind the suitcase, yep. underneath my bag the whole time. <laughs> So what happened was I actually called my parents and I, I was telling them the whole time, oh, look, I, you know, my wallet's well, well, gone. What do I do? Yep. They said, okay, cancel your cards because someone might use your cards. And yep. So I canceled my credit card. Oh, no. And yeah, that's what happened. And Start again. <laughs> I had to start all over again. So my mom was helping me, you know, yep. with that situation and she helped me get my credit cards back from Australia, get them sent back to me. Um, so yeah, she was going through that process and through that time. So, hey, what did you tell the cops? <laughs> Oh, okay. So I was c I was contemplating. Oh, I should go back and tell them I found it and say thank you and everything. But I was so embarrassed. I I didn't know. <laughs> I was like, you know what? If they don't find it, and I mean, 
It'll just be a mystery. It'll just be a mystery. You know, oh, you know, that's fine. Well, they would have looked at the CCTV and gone, no one's <laughs> no touched one's it back. T- <laughs> <laughs> this foreign is crazy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I thought, like, this is the only time where I felt, so like, really embarrassed overseas. And I just thought, you know what? Don't worry about it. They probably <laughs> prefer that I don't go there and yeah. be like, it was here the whole time. Ha, ha, ha. Um, <laughs> I felt so bad for them. <laughs> they were really trying to help. Um, but yeah, and then throughout that time, that's when the audition started for yep. the Chinese TV show. And I told mom about it, and she was a bit, um, you know, she was questioning it a bit as well. But she also was happy for me and was like, "Yeah, do it. You know, you never know. What's you never gonna what's yeah. going to happen. And don't worry about it because you probably won't get through the auditions anyway." And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> And then I came back and said, I'm on the TV show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we get a live stream. <laughs> yeah, my family really took it. They took it well. Uh, yep. My dad, he's a musician, so he took it. Uh, he's a composer. Okay. So he, he knows the industry a little bit and uh, he was a bit concerned. So he did he did his own investigation. <laughs> yeah, he did his own investigation of it. And um, he's he, in the end, he was supportive. And he was like, yeah, all right, you know what? It's in China. Go do it. Yep. No one's really done it before, I think. So why why not do it? Okay. So yeah, I got there. And so okay, well let's let, let's now talk about that experience. So, mm. um, so you've you've you know you started to build up a bit of a following doing this live stream. Yeah. So <laughs> now you you filming was in Beijing. Yes, Beijing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you fl- they've obviously flown you back to Beijing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And where did where did you stay? Okay, so we started staying at a um, hotel that they rented out for us, and they made us like they got us to meet the team. Um, they also got us to meet the like the people, the participants, mm. and you know we were just briefed on what was going to happen. Yep. And um, they let us m- meet our managers because we had uh, we had a lot of people there, right? So we had to ha- they had to have like um, supervisors for us, and um, <coughs> we you know got introduced to them. And then once everything was relaxed and done, they then relocated us to a area which was actually a police it was uh secure it was called like an international security base or something like that okay yeah i was like what like i wasn't a bit i was a bit like is this like a government facility, <laughs> facility? Yeah. Yeah. uh no but it just turns out it had enough bunkers to hold us and had a lot of room and it was like a huge, it was like this huge, huge um, school or like academy where they had like a gym. They had this huge, uh, these huge studios. We had separate studios for the stage and everything that we uh, would have okay. to catch by bus yep. to get to. Yep. Um, and they were way out from the city. Like they they were really big um, warehouses. Yep. So they had to, you yeah, know, so be it's somewhere basically else. Like, a, like a big studio basically. Yeah, yeah. Yep. These huge warehouses. Um, and we would get driven there every day. Um, We'd have to get up early in the morning, about five, to get up and get dressed. Um, we'd have to go downstairs and they would put makeup. We'd have the makeup team there. We'd yeah. have the hair team there, you know, go down and get that done. And um, and then we'd have to go and start filming. Mm-hmm. Uh, but on the first day I arrived at the police bunkers, um, they introduced me to my room and to my housemates. Mm-hmm. And I was really nervous because I only just realized, you know, Rachel, you have to speak Korean. You have to speak Korean and Chinese while you're here. Mm. You're not going to be able to speak English at all. Yeah. So I was, yeah, I, I, I made myself scared again and yep. got really worried about my language barrier. And I started doubting my potential. And, you know, what if you don't get better? Like, yep. what do you? What happens if you aren't up to the standard which they thought you were? Mm. And then, um, you know, at that time, you can't really start thinking like that. You can't yeah, start, you, you know. You're supposed to be pumping yourself up. Exactly. You've got to put on a show, right? Like exactly. Like an entertainer. Yeah. And yeah. you have to you have to be at your in your best shape. Mm. And so what I thought was, you know, you know you, look, if you got through this far, it means that obviously there's, there, something. there's something there. Yeah. And you just got to play off that. And you can only do as, you know, well as you can. You can't just blame yourself for yeah. everything, right? So, yeah, so then I thought, you know what, yeah, I'm here for a reason. You know, they know who I am. They understand. They've interviewed me multiple times. They know what to expect. So I thought, right, okay, done. (laughs) 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 Like, I I set myself a little bit of a level. Like, okay, this is 
the level and I'm fine. Let's just get through this. Let's do it. This is going to be a huge adventure. Adventure. It's going to be great. Yep. Um, I was going to do like a little vlog every day. Yep. Um, I didn't do that. I didn't get to follow through. Okay. <laughs> the, the time, because the schedule. They work you so hard, right? Like it's, you're up early, you're filming all day. Yeah. And then like by the time you finish, it's probably late at night, right? Oh yeah. Uh, the first day of filming yep. started uh, early in the morning. About so we got up at six, let's just say, and started filming around nine. Mm -hmm. From then, it ended at three a.m. in the morning the next day, and yep. then we were driven home. We all had a shower. I remember having a shower in the um, in the dorms, and I would look out the window. There's like a little window at the top. Yep. And I could see the sun rising. Having come up. Yep. And I'm about to go to bed after yeah. having a shower, and that was just, that was when I was like realizing like. I've got a long way to go. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be hard work. This is going to be hard work. Yeah. And it was, but it was the best, best thing I've ever done to challenge myself in my life. Okay. It, yeah. So ha how many contestants were there on this show? So to start, there was 100. Yep. Um, 101, I should say. Okay. 101. Um, and then it's like process of elimination. So each yep. round, round, each challenge, we got eliminated. And that was decided by the audience mm. but um the audience doesn't know that also the company has a say mm. obviously. yeah so it'd be like 50 50 obviously like when you watch um or because you know Angie and i we we would often watch um like you know australia's um, got talent or something well not not <laughs> we actually watch more of like you know um uh well i guess the voice china but then i think they got in oh yeah they got in trouble with copyright Oh yeah, <laughs> so then they changed it to like Sing China, and yeah. because <laughs> so they didn't buy the rights, right? Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah. right. And so we, we were like watching so many cases like that. Yeah, so we watched one year, and we were like, oh yeah, they got the voice too. And then the next, um, because um, Jay Chow was 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 on. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah, Jay Chow. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and so then we we're watching like the next season. And it's like, oh, it's changed now, but and the chairs don't turn anymore. They like fly. They out. fly. Out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can tell like, <laughs> oh, they got caught. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then when you watch like some of the other um, singing shows, you're like, hey, these sets look really familiar. <laughs> yeah, the, that's the thing. Like everyone just copies yeah. like alternate versions of it, yeah. right? And like the rap of China, that was a big one, yeah. um, which was actually. Taken. I don't know if you know the show, yeah, but yeah, I, we, we, we've um, seen some episodes. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Of um, give me the money. Uh, yeah, it's some um money rap show in in uh Korea. Yeah, and it was yeah, give me the money or something like that. Yeah, and uh, they just completely copied that yep. in the rap of China. Yeah, and you know, knowing China, I. They beeped out nearly like half of the raps because, yeah. like, it was it's all, all the you know, cuss words, right? yeah, cuss and yeah. slang and yeah. all that. So I, so that got attacked, I think, a little, and then um, they had to change a few things. But uh, yeah, it was funny. And actually, speaking along those lines, this company was actually targeted as um, copy, you know, copyrights, um, being sorry, being copycats because they copied a Korean TV show. Yeah. But actually, we didn't because the Korean team which made that show were the same producers and the same directors that produced our show. Oh, there you go. Um, but because in China it happens quite a bit, lots yeah. of audiences just went straight into, yeah, you know, smashing you it, guys, basically. you know, your copyright claims. You, you, you got to get it right. Like this is not, this is not, you know, the Korean TV show, and you guys aren't Korean. This isn't your show. You shouldn't be doing this. But then, you know. Um, you know the director and producers were were Korean and yeah. they were the ones who made that show. So they were could uh, the show was called Produce One Hundred One in mm -hmm. Korea, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, those producers and stuff all went to China to do this show. So, so could those producers speak Chinese? No, so they had translators. Oh, so wow. this was like a very complex show which they were trying to make like trying to work. Yep. And um so the producers and the directors would all have trans personal translators mm -hmm. and then they would then the staff like the usually it's like the head the heads of whichever they were doing. So like the um music department were Korean. The choreographers were Korean, mm. you know, but the people who were like the managers and things were all Chinese and yep. like the lights people were Chinese. Camera people, camera people were Chinese, and yep. so they had to communicate properly and make sure everyone, w you yep. know, could understand what was going, going on. on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and when I got interviewed, so everyone has to get interviewed, right? So what would happen is the Chinese person would speak. Oh, sorry, the Korean interviewer would speak. 
<laughs> and, and ask the questions. Okay. And then the translator translate the questions into Chinese and then, then they ask the contestant okay. or vice versa. With me, sometimes um, they would ask in Chinese, they'll ask in Korean, but I said, look, you know, do you have an English translator? Because then that would just make it easier for you guys to, um, if I can't say it in either of the languages. And so they agreed uh, that they would some they'll they'll talk to me in Korean, okay, and then I would reply in English or Korean, and okay. then they would just translate it, okay, yeah, because I uh, I didn't I wasn't I wasn't uh, I couldn't talk enough Chinese to you know I couldn't fluently yep. speak without you know stumbling and yep. you know so uh, my Chinese actually because of this I thought I had to get better. Mm. And that's when I started growing on Chinese. I tried to talk to every contestant. I, um, one of my, f- uh, I won't say fans, but followers, people who were f- supporting me, um, they would actually send gifts okay. to our base. Yeah, that's cool. it's a, it's a common thing over there. Yeah, yeah, it's really, it's quite, it's yeah, it's sweet, uh, <laughs> but scary, yeah, a little bit scary. <laughs> when any of the gifts you're like. What are you sending this exactly? Shit for? <laughs> exactly, and yeah. uh, actually, we had a security guard who went through the. Oh, who actually checked them? Okay, that's good because yeah. it would be a bit awkward if you're opening them yourself and then you're like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like dead rat, like oh, yeah. what? Um, yeah, no, I, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, yeah. well, what if they're just strangers sending us weird stuff? Yeah. But it wasn't. It was checked. All everything was checked and made sure that it was from a you know reliable source and that everything in there was safe and blah blah blah. And um, what they did was they sent me like a Chinese learner's book. So I, oh. yeah, so I okay. ended up learning off that book. And um, look, oh, the contestants were so nice. They would all talk to me and help me with my book if I didn't know how to pronounce it. They're like, oh, no, 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 this is how you pronounce it. And they would talk to me. So I made very strong bonds with yep. contestants. Oh, that you're with. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, and as the show went on, I tried to speak more, more Chinese in the interviews. And eventually I was able to kind of, you know, Respond. Be able to respond yeah. and understand, which was nice. It's one of those things, right? When you um, the the process when you're trying to com- like return fire in a different language, mm. um, you know, there's like almost zero. Like, I, I'm just trying to think of how to articulate it because I sort of think about it like when I speak Chinese, I don't. It's not like you know how like when you think of thoughts in your head. Oh yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So <laughs> normally, when you think of something in your head. Um, I don't really know whether I'm thinking in English or Chinese. You're not aware. You just yeah. think of the idea. You just like think of it, right? Like the physical... The whatever you're thinking about. Yeah. Um, so you don't really have to think about how to say it. And then, but when, you, when, you, when, you, when you're speaking for lang- in language, we sort of take it for granted that if we're speaking in English, that the words just sort of come. Come and out. Yeah, come out the right way. And, you know, um, the processing time is obviously mm. so minute that we have the thought, out it comes. Yeah. Right? And then... Yeah. Um, that's the thing, you know, I think with translation is that, you know, if you have somebody speaking to you in English and then you've got to turn, return fire in Chinese, then it's like, you know, you can't just go and directly convert word for word like what Google would try and do. I think Google's gotten <laughs> Google Translate. Actually. Yeah, like Google Translate is essentially, you know, almost like word for word, right? But it's gotten a lot better. I think oh, they, yeah. they fixed a lot of the syntax things and some of the common I issues, think it's received right? enough uh, yeah. hate. <laughs> <laughs> or feedback. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? But, um, yeah, like, uh, you know, it's one of those things where, I think you know when you when you're speaking a a, a, a different language, you don't really think it, like you don't think about it. Like, it's not like mm. you're going, okay, how would I say this in English, and then now how do I say this in? Actually, that makes it more difficult to think of it like that. Yeah, uh, yeah, and think of it. Okay, now think about the process. How do we translate this? If you to think about all of that yep. is confusing. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so you, you know when you when you're speaking other languages, mm. do you sometimes have thoughts and then go? Um, like that thought was in Korean or Chinese as opposed to that thought was in English? Yes. Oh, I had a thought. Um, well, I was, oh, look, I feel that happens to people who are so fluent in languages that it just comes to them. Yep. I don't think I've reached that <laughs> yet. Yep. I wouldn't say I'm that great um, yet. Uh, I'm still going. Um, but there was a time where I was thinking of a Chinese phrase or like I, I i immediately came up with the phrase in chinese but i spoke i said korean i said it in korean yeah and that phrase doesn't like it, it, it's not a saying in a korean yeah and um oh no sorry back to front i was thinking of it in korean and i spoke chinese and i ended up saying something which 
you know, not many Chinese people say. And it was like, it was something to do with like, oh, I'm so, um, it was um, like, what? Oh no no no! I thought of it in Chinese. Sorry, I'm getting so confused. So I, sp- <laughs> a little, I thought of lay sila, right? So I'm so tired that yeah. you know you can die. I said that in Korean, and yeah. then they were like, "What? Like yeah. they don't have that saying over there, and yeah. it, it's weird. It's like, it, and they never say it in dramas. They never say it in conversation. Mm. It's not like a usual thing you would hear. Um, and I just, well, I like, and I remember saying it a couple of times as like a joke, but in a different context. And, and then they le- would have just gave you weird looks, right? And they gave me weird looks, and they were just going on like, you know, are you okay? Like, are you? Yeah. Do you need any? That's probably thinking it's like really serious. Yeah, no, they were, and yeah, and because you're were so like, tired, you, you can die, and they're like, okay, we'll take you to the hospital. Yeah, yeah. They were like, do you need like to rest? Yeah. Do you want us to take you to the hospital? And I said. No, 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 no. It's an expression. Right? It's an expression. Yeah. Like, I was just like, oh, you know, no, yeah. it's a joke. And he's, it's like a joke. And, uh, and, you know, it was very like, oh, God, I said the wrong thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so I had something like that happen. And it was during an interview. So I was just like, oops. oops. But they just cut it out. You oh, know. okay. All Editors. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was actually worried if they were going to keep that in there and yeah. make it like drama or yeah. something. And they didn't, <laughs> which was good. Um, so, um, so on the on the show, what what stage did you make it through to then? Okay, so I think I ma- I made it to stage like uh, so we count we d- we did the stages through like people like how yep. many people were left. So yep. I went up till eleven people were left. So okay. I was the top eleven. Okay, and the and then um, from there they picked the champion at the very end and okay yeah. So you're basically in the final stage. In the finals, yeah, but yep. I didn't make I didn't make it because uh, then they cut off uh, extra people and then did the top eight, but that wasn't the same night. Yeah. So they did that in the same same night yep. same night same show. Yeah. Yep. And uh, was that a, was <coughs> that a relief? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thank God, like, because you know, um, if I won yeah. or if I was in the top, whatever, in the top eight, um, they had to do another performance, uh. and they had to sing and dance, and um, and they had to do a, like a little bit more stuff than we had to do. Yeah. Um, but, but you still would so have had to prepare it, right? In case you were in it. Yes, actually, yeah. Yeah, we did. Um, yeah. We had to be take precautions. They're like, okay, look, so. Uh, don't do it yet, but we need you to have a, uh, an idea. We're going to give you these scripts. These are the things you need to know, and these are the words you, and songs which you will have to know and unless, you know, you get picked, unless you don't get picked. And then um, actually th- it, this was the, – the final was very strangely put. So the top 11 people, they, uh, th- they were separated into two groups, and um, the people who didn't get in – to the top eight, they had their own kind of performance, mm-hmm. and then the people who did get into the uh, top eight had another performance, and then there were two, and then there were two p- other performances by um, a girl group and a guy group, okay. and these groups were created through th- um, mixing the top eight people and the people who were selected through the company and through the people who got in the top eight. Yep. And I was that girl who got picked to be in that group. Okay. In the girl group. Yep. So uh, they had to make a performance too. So I had to prepare th- uh, two performances that mm. I may or may have not had to do. So it was very tiresome and, yep. yeah. <laughs> so, um, w- ha- like, w- there would have been a lot of, obviously, choreography. Yeah. Do they give you vocal mm. training? Yep, uh, we had vocal tra- so when we weren't shooting, we had yep. vocal training, we had fitness training, mm-hmm. we had discipline training. Discipline training. Yeah, so <laughs> exactly. I was um this is when they made us uh I guess it was because we were in a secure like a security guard type environment. Yep. Um they made us learn the ways of, you know, what what strict laws you have to go through or not strict laws, strict um I don't know, lessons you had to go through to become a security guard or a yep. top-notch security guard or someone like that. And it involved, you know, standing completely still for like two uh, for an hour, things like that. Okay. Um, we had to learn self-defense, things like this. Really? Yeah, it was really strange. But now that I think about it, I think it's because, yeah, we were staying there, right? So they wanted to probably uh, like 
advertise their you know their academy and things like that but they saw it they 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 brought it into the show as a discipline thing like you know um to be a star in china you have to be disciplined and you know you have to be able to have that (coughs) self-motivation things like that and they showed those reels of us okay when you're doing that sort of stuff yeah like hardships you know um and then we had makeup lessons Okay. So ways to, you know, put on makeup and yep. what things you should do to avoid this and that. Um, oh, so they actually, so you, were you doing, but you weren't doing your own makeup, right? Like no, but in some cases we might have to do our own makeup or okay. just being aware of it when we do live streams or something like that. Yep. They wanted us to be aware and, you know. How to do it the right way. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, that's kind of cool. Like that's still teaching life skills, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I guess if makeup's classified as a life skill, right? Like it's not really yeah. for a guy, but. Yeah, like yeah. that's the odd thing, you know, over there they they um, they were basing it, like obviously they were looking at the girls and saying, you know, this is how you should do your hair and la, 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 la. But they were also as equally as, um, you know, interested in the men and how they made their jawline look really sharp okay. and i just realized yeah this is the entertainment industry right like th- we're not yeah. normal people we have to yeah. we have to look good we have to be camera ready and yep. this is why they probably are teaching the guys as well they were talking about their eyebrows yep. so making their eyebrows look very thick and very yep. strong and their jawline and what is that through makeup through makeup okay so they had like you know when um there was uh, a guy at my school in high school and he was Chinese and he and he was very stylish but he wanted to have a <laughs> this, so, okay hang on <laughs> because there's there's, there's this some forms of okay, Asian, yeah. Asian fashion which you know um borderline on flamboyant right so yes. when you say stylish are you saying stylish is in like you know trendy stylish brand name stylish or are you talking about flamboyant stylish i'm talking about uh like trendy yeah, like okay. you know had all the brands yeah um <laughs> they that's that's a good thing to note actually yeah, <laughs> yeah. um good thing you pointed that out yeah. i uh yeah no he was definitely into brands and he um he wanted to look more masculine right and yeah. uh i think he went through a phase where he just wanted to experiment with uh, having a beard but he couldn't grow one right <laughs> so he put on makeup it looked it looked real but it was makeup it was like a shadow over his whole face oh wow so he gave himself like a like a i don't know what do you call yeah, it like again? a five o'clock shadow like a five like. o'clock yeah. shadow yeah and uh, everyone thought it was a beard from far away, but when you go up close, it's completely smooth. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just like half of his face was grey. It's just like, oh, wow. oh my goodness! But things like that, yeah. you know, they okay. they pay attention to, and uh, I found it great. <laughs> it was really funny to see uh, guys try to like put yeah, on makeup get right. and get it right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was hilarious. Yeah, okay. but yeah. yeah, you can see why they did it. But yeah, we had lots of lessons. It. Um, I wasn't. I didn't really bother too much about my makeup. I got it done every day. I'm a bit lazy with makeup generally. Yep. Yep. Um, only just put on foundation. That's it. Mm-hmm. Over there, I yeah. They taught they me everything. <laughs> they did everything. Yeah. They taught me like everything from like to the eyelash. What you should do with your eyelash and everything. Yep. It was crazy. Wow. Yeah. So at, at the conclusion of of um of that you know the filming of that show, um, what did you do from there? So yeah, uh, good question. Um, after that, I actually had a few ads and things that I did, okay. um, and I was actually given a contract to oh. sign uh, to be a part of an entertainment company mm-hmm. over there. And uh, at first, I was you know I was excited to be able to have that opportunity, and um, but then I thought, look, I just want can I can I go home first? Like I just want to yeah, go because I was there for about a year. Oh, wow. um, the whole show took quite a long time. Um, so it took a quite a long time to do. Uh, and so after that year, I just thought, look, can we, you know, can I go home? They said, yeah, sure. Go home, think about it, let us know. And um, we'll go from there. Yeah, yeah, we'll go from there. My parents didn't like the idea at all. Why is that? Um, in the contract, it said eight years of wow. me being part of the agency. Yeah. Yep. And that's a long time, right? Yeah. So that, and uh, knowing China, they're known to have, you know, slave contracts, meaning, you know, yep. once you're there, you're there. Locked in. Yeah. Locked in. Uh, you don't make any money, you know, things like that. And I have um, I have a few friends who are actually from the entertainment industry in Asia. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, they helped me throughout this process. And I'm really appreciative of that. Um, they said, look, you know, they warned me, you know, this is, it's great that you got that opportunity, but these are the warning signs. 
Yeah. And if you're going to do a contract, everything's negotiable in China. Yeah, uh, of con- course. Yeah, you <laughs> should know this, right? <laughs> Everything is negotiable in China. That's, that's why they've got no issues in asking for a discount when they come to Australia. Yeah, <laughs> they come into department stores <laughs> yeah. and they're like, can we get a discount? Like, like, it's, a little yeah, it's a bit different here. Yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah, maybe if you go to a market stall outside, <laughs> but not in like a you know huge mu- department store. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, okay, okay. And... Came back, told my parents. Parents were really flabbergasted. Like, they were just like, what the hell? Yeah. Like, this is... You've been gone for a year. <laughs> you've come back and now you say you're going to go away for an eight, eight exactly. Year more years. Yeah. And they're like, you know, well, what about uni? What about, you know, yeah. all of this stuff? And then I said, well, yeah, I mean, I want to do that. But, I mean, this is a very... You know, Opportunity. This is... I've never heard of anyone doing this. Yeah. And, you know, if... I like to think if there's an ever a first person who's doing it, usually yeah. that's the one that makes the path for yeah. it, you know, and I thought, you know, maybe this will, you know, be... You might not hear from them because they're slaves. <laughs> 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 right? Yeah. So, so yeah. they could have they been hundreds before you, but yeah, it's like yeah. they're, all, they're all locked away, dying they're in a room. locked away, somewhere. man. <laughs> they, they tricked me. Like, <laughs> like, they know. They know how to gather us. Um, they're in their dungeons. Uh, <laughs> um Oh uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's like my de- my parents' response. They're like, well, how do you know? Like, <laughs> you know. Um, but anyway, we negotiated with them, and uh, after months of me asking the Korean team, look, I, you know, what should I do? And uh, because I represented the Korean team, they said, look, well, actually, we were hoping that you'd come back to Korea or whatever. But since we're in this situation, we'll look after you, and we'll be your managers, and we'll take take care of you in the company. Yep. I was like, oh, okay. And so we were managed. We managed to get the contract down to four years, okay, and then three years. Yep. And then they, and then I was like, okay, well that sounds, three years sounds okay, and uh, I haven't signed yet though. Yep. And um, I w- and I did a risky move, and I we we ended up actually go- I ended up go- going to China to that entertainment company. Yep. And they had a, like a, an apartment for me. They put me in the apartment and they... Um, you hadn't signed the contract yet? I haven't signed a contract yet. Okay. So you what? You just said, I'm coming. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and um, I, th- I started... They started training me. I was going to this huge... Uh, the, the, comp- the company had like a huge studio. Yep. A huge... Actually, I shouldn't say studio. I should say buildings. Yep. Um, and they had two buildings and they were about six levels, eight levels. Mm-hmm. And they're all dedicated to, you know, train us and they have like different wardrobes. They had meeting rooms, yep. um, conference rooms, like lots of s- stuff. And it was quite new. And uh, I stayed there for about, you know, I was training there for like three months and right. I haven't signed a contract yet. Okay. And what happened was I um, I – actually did go on a few i went on a few auditions and i went to um i was in a tv sh- drama yep uh i was i was just like a side character though i wasn't anything huge and um and i got vocal trained i got everything done and then i got contacts more contacts over there and then i was told by the korean team you know actually we we're gonna we might have to leave because that was during the time when uh, Ch- I don't know if you knew about this, but China had a bit of a problem with Korea and the missile. Did you hear about that? Um, it was a couple of years ago, but there was this uh, missile which caused a lot of uh, drama. drama yep. And that made China react in a way of saying, you know what? We're not going to let any Koreans do any work here in China. So whoever is here on work business, whatever it is, you got to leave. Okay. You can't come here. Yep. Um, and they even stopped the transport of like, you know, the um, trading of K-pop CDs and things like that. Yep. And even artists that were meant to have concerts, concerts there. they stopped them. Stopped them. Oh, wow. So it, hu- it, it created... Big, big drama. Big, yeah, big impact. Yep. And so um, I was like, oh, shit. You know, the yep. guy who's meant to be looking after me and everything, he's not going to be here anymore. So then eventually I ended up uh, saying, you know, look, guys, I, I won't be able to stay because, you know, my... My roots are gone, yeah. <laughs> you know. And at, it was a bit difficult to explain it to them, um, but my Korean manager and everyone... Uh, so they, they were still there with you? They were, st- they were with me. Okay. So they, they made sure they were there to clear up everything and yep. um, let me get out of the yeah. contract. We haven't signed it yet, right? I haven't signed it yet. Yeah. 
So in a way, I guess it was a bit, you know, of course it was kind of leading them on a bit and I felt a bit bad, but then I thought, you know, if I didn't do that, I might still be there and, um, you know, who knows what would have happened. Um, and, yeah, that was it really. That's what happened. Wow. And then I came back here and I still have those contacts. So I ended yep. up doing my own thing. And okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, big, big complicated story. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, so then, um, okay, so using those – so 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 then how did the whole YouTubing thing come up? So YouTube started because I actually – because I, I started uni to finish off my language degree. Mm-hmm. And so, so that's in Korean. It's in um, it's actually in Chinese. Oh, you doing okay? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know it's a bit complex. Yeah. I'm a bit uh, the language thing. I've kept Korean um as a, like a private thing for me to do. Yep. And then because I already did that in university, like in the university over there, and then I'm finishing Chinese here because uh, my university once again there was no Korean. It was only yep. Chinese, so yep. I did that. Okay. Yeah. And there's, um, a lot of, there's a lot of crossover between the languages too. Yeah, and so also I thought, look, I, I mean, I, I studied Korean quite a bit beforehand as well, so I yep. felt like I should probably get the levels up so they're even. Yep. Um, yeah, and then t- uh, I started doing YouTube because I thought, you know, I want to have, I want to have like, I want to see how my progress is. Like I wanted to have some kind of evidence yep. to see Am I improving? Yep. Am I getting better? Okay. And yeah, and I thought also it's a fun thing to do. I hope that then hopefully followers from before would like to follow me here. Yep. Yeah, and just create like a little like a little world for myself to yep. just experience the languages again, start doing because I I mainly speak in Korean on that channel. On that channel. Yeah. yeah. And uh maybe Chinese soon, soon as well. Uh, yeah. so you, and you'll do it on the same channel or are you going to start a separate channel for Oof, that? I don't know yet. I'm thinking I don't know whether I should <laughs> create a separate channel, but I think I'm going to do it all together yeah. because um it's that way it's easier mm. and yep. you know if I mean uh, if they can't understand it, you know, put subtitles there or they'll, yep. they'll just wait for the next video for something yeah. else. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. it gives you a, a a different market to cater to as well. Exactly. Yep. Um and I and I was experienced to both of the cultures, so yep. I thought it only makes sense if I mm. practice both on the same channel because that's who I am. That's yep. that's what makes up the channel. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I guess, you know, between the the two cultures, what would you say um this, the, we'll do the differences first and we'll talk about similarities. So, sure. what do you think was biggest differences between the two, uh, I guess, the Korean culture mm. and the Chinese culture? Um, I was mainly surrounded by them when they were working, so their work mm. ethic is very different. Okay. Um, there's a big thing about saving face in China. Mm-hmm. And and there was a lot of times where, you know, they might be wrong or, like, the schedule was wrong or the Chinese, the, 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 they, they didn't, the staff yep. couldn't, uh, couldn't stick to it or they just um, the cameramen they stopped work because they were going over time and they just thought you know what you yep. know I, I don't want to be here anymore I don't <laughs> like you didn't say we had to be here till over time so they were just dr- you know they left the camera and they went and that is su- yeah and and then what would happen is is that um, the guys in, who are the, in charge of the Chinese team would be like oh you know they're not usually like that sorry you yeah, know things okay. like that and then um, to you know to save their face they they said you know oh look we'll they weren't feeling well we'll yep. let them rest and we'll come, come back. back so th- and um there were a few other instant um things that happened as well but mm. that's just one of the big ones that i remember and um in korea i just know that if anything happened like that they'll be fired yeah like the the, the the koreans are they really push you and they expect you to be there over mm. time yeah you know till the end yeah you know even if you weren't asked to do that they're expecting you're still there. Yeah. Yeah, you to hang on and Exactly. Keep going. And so when the cameraman stopped and they just left, yep. they were sh- so shocked that the the whole thing was like what what hap- what? Yeah. And then they had to stop, they had to cut it for today because they had to finish it yep. because they weren't coming back. And so yep. we had to go home and and then start where we left off the next day. Okay. Yeah. And then um so similarity wise, was there many similarities that you could <coughs> Um, yeah, well, uh, eating, like eating, mm-hmm. uh, food culture. Mm-hmm. So I've come to realize that like everyone likes to eat together. Mm. It's like a communal thing. Yeah. And, uh, um, I never really thought of it much. Like I would go and have a sandwich by myself or just eat something by myself. Yeah. It wouldn't bother me. But then after, you know, going to Korea and then after going to China, yep. if I was eating by myself, 
they would just come and sit next to me and be like, oh, why are you eating by yourself? Yeah. Like, yeah, eat with me. Yeah, talk. Yeah, let's, let's eat with me and share food and things yeah. like that. And, um, you know, they'll get the chopsticks and put their food and uh, their chopsticks in the same bowl. Yeah. And when I first, like, kind of started... <laughs> You're like, <laughs> uh, what are you guys doing? Yeah, I was <laughs> like, are you sick? Like, I don't want to, like, are we, are we meant to be, like, you know, dividing it up? And yeah. No, they just go all in and it's just like sharing everything, yeah. saliva there's, there's and all. Good, there's, there's, there's good and bad to it, right? Like if you're fast and you're a fast eater, you get more food. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and if you're slow, well, it sucks to you be miss you. Out. Yeah, yeah. you miss out, right? That's actually it. Yeah, I um, I wasn't fast. I wasn't quick enough with my chopsticks. Yeah. So, you know, everyone was eating really, fi- um, really quickly. But um, yeah, that was a similarity. They all love to eat together. Yeah. And it's like a family thing, you yeah. know, and it felt good. And so when I came back... I kind of felt bad if I ate by myself. I'm like, yeah. I kind of felt sorry for myself. I'm like, I should <laughs> look Your at parents me. parents would be horrified yeah. though if you were eating and then you're like, oh, try and pick off their plate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My dad hates that. He <laughs> would never. Oh, no. Oh, my dad. Oh, yeah, actually, I, I accidentally did pick up like um, some vegetable off my dad's plate once and yeah. he threw a fit. He was like, what why? are you doing? Like, yeah, why are you touching this? If you want more broccoli or whatever it is I was eating, Go to the kitchen and get some. Don't touch my food. And like, I was like, oh god, I can't believe I just did that. Like, I've never done that before. But it was like, yeah, it it, it, it sort of wired itself in. Do you do that here too? Do you guys share like? Yeah, well, like Angie and I. So like, you know, um, when we and like when we go to weddings and stuff, and or like places where it's alternate serve, so we'll eat half and then switch. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. you can try both foods. Yeah, well, it's a couple things, right? Yeah, but then and but then also like you know when we go out to eat, like you know, I guess I'm I'm probably more on the lax side so like you know normally you know i guess you know if you eat at a chinese restaurant they'll give you like you know utensils that are specific for the dish mm. to serve out yeah yeah i'll just chopstick in uh. <laughs> <laughs> <Who cares? laughs> yeah that's that's where my family draws the line they're yeah. like okay there are utensils here we're using them <laughs> yeah so yeah I, yeah I wouldn't i wouldn't be i wouldn't be um and that's you know, with friends right like with with yeah like anyone right you know unless somebody's sick Right? Yeah, obviously. I, I guess the the if there's no like if there are utensils there, you really should like the et- correct etiquette would be to use the utensils. And if there's no utensils, the I think the next correct etiquette would be to use the back of your chopsticks. Oh yeah, yeah so turn your chopsticks around. But if you think about it, right? I haven't seen anyone ho- do that though. But you're holding the back of your chopsticks, so whatever's on your hands, you just now put it around <laughs> and you just put it straight in the dish anyway. Yeah, so yeah. I might as well just use the other end. <laughs> exactly. Been in my mouth. Exactly. <laughs> That's much better. Share, share it around, you know. <laughs> At least I know what I'm putting in my mouth. You don't know what you've been touching in your hands, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. 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 No. Actually, yeah. That makes so much sense. My brother, um, he's very big about you know don't share either, and he turns his chopsticks around because he got told by someone you know yeah. that's the proper way. Yeah. And now knowing that, I'm like. Hang on, yeah. yeah. Did you wash your hands before you picked up those chopsticks? Yeah. Because, you know, if you're using the chopsticks because you don't want to use your hands because your hands are dirty, well, then swinging them around is just... Putting whatever yeah, you just had on, on your, your hands hand. into the food. That's, you may as well eat with your hands. Yeah, like. that's right. You must have just gone <laughs> and grabbed them. I'm going to tell him that. He's going to be yeah. so... He'll <laughs> be mortified now. He'll be mortified. <laughs> Never eating uh, Asian food again. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right. Um, Let's let's talk about this because I always love exploring this, and okay. um, and 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 this is not meant to upset or offend anyone. Um, I always love talking about how there's a lo- there's a I guess in all of the in majority of the Asian languages there's a real um, commonality um, of where they where they come from. I guess you know when you think about syntax and sentence structure um, between I think Chinese, Korean, um, Japanese, they're all fairly fairly similar. Mm, yeah, um, I agree. And then, like one of the things that I, I I often love to bring up with my with my Korean friends is um, that you know, it, at one stage you know it was all the same language, right? It's just a different dialect. Yeah, you know. Um, okay. And then in 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 like all the countries, right? In yeah, Japan, yeah, yeah. And even, even even Vietnamese is like just you know the same. It could, well, it's just because they use the French romanization of the words, mm. right? So it's like using pinyin, right? Yeah. So. Um, and I, I understand, you know, in different dialects, obviously different tones and things like that. But like, I always love, some, you know, to bring up whenever they go, no, nah, it's a totally different language, right? And then I'm like, <laughs> okay, well then, how do you say, you know, um, like, what do you call the rice congee, right? And everybody calls it chuk, yeah, right. <laughs> so, so it's all the same word, right? And then, um, you know, um, how do you how do you say doctor, right? And between most of the languages, it's pretty similar. How do you say it? Uh, you say it in Chinese? Yeah, you said. My uh, in Korean it's uh, wis, wisu. Yeah, yeah. And then in Japanese it's uh, ishan. 
You sound oh hey hang on you know way more you did you study Japanese? No, I didn't. Oh well, okay, uh, you know like lots of Japanese high, like a bit of high school Japanese. Oh okay, yeah, 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 but still like you can remember all these words. I don't remember <laughs> anything. Yeah, yeah. So there's like you know there's a real sort of um, I don't know. I think you know um, hi- from a historical point of view. Yeah, of course. You know, and uh, it's just it's it's just interesting now because I think you know there's a real political side of it. You know where people want to push that. You know. Uh, whether it's pro China or, or pro Korea or, or pro Japan or whatever, you know, like people people have forgotten that it's all just people. Yeah. You know? um, and, and I think you know, if you're on the border of those countries, even though you might be able to experience, you know, the different the two different aspects of living in in both of those countries, I think a lot of those people would probably speak both languages, right? Yeah, um, definitely. There's a reason why, like. Loads of Koreans actually. Uh, when I was there, they 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 all know Japanese so well, and they learn it really quickly. Why? Mm. Because the grammar system is exactly the same. Yeah. All they have to do is learn the new words. Yep. And that's what I found. I was like, oh yeah, like th- the structure is exactly the same. They just change the words around. Yep. That's it. So did that make it easier for mm. you? I guess, and and you sort of always flipped between Chinese and Korean, right? Yeah. So, um, did you find one language easier than the other to pick up? Uh, yes, so Korean was definitely a lot easier for me easier. Um, because I actually watched, I was really into their culture. I got into the dramas, I got into the yep. you know, the, the songs, K-pop, things like that. Yep. So I surrounded myself by the, you know, the language quite a bit. Yep. Uh, whereas in China, I didn't get to, I didn't find as many shows. I couldn't like get my hands on anything that yep. I could s- see a lot of or hear a lot of. Um, so yeah, and I just loved Korean stuff. So I love Korean food and yep. just learned it a little bit more casually um but there's definitely a connection like you said between those two languages um (coughs) a good example is cha cha yeah Uh, tea yeah exactly the same word in korea for tea in china and in um japan right it's 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 like or matcha or matcha or cha or yeah it's a specific type of tea it has cha in it yeah so yeah, that's you know if you know that's a very very simplified easy example, yeah. but many things like that. Yeah, there's a lot of that crossover. Yeah, and uh, uh, when I bring it up, they say, "Oh yeah, yeah, there is a similar, but also there's a difference." Yeah. So they always everybody <laughs> always loves talking about the difference, right? Yeah. So uh, you know, I probably got the un- unpopular, and I don't, I don't. When I say it, I'm not trying to say that everybody's Chinese. Like I'm just saying they're all. They're all part of that Asia region. That culture. That, that culture. In the beginning. Right? Yeah, in the beginning. Like I think, you know, as and then obviously it's all do, everybody's developed their own their own nuances. Mm, yeah. Right? Um and, and, and that's you know, that that's what happens, right? That's how culture develops. Just like how Australian culture is very different to English culture. Mm. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> like it, it's, oh, it's Australia. And, and, the fun, and the funniest depictions are obviously, you know, from the Americans who you know, believe that we're all convicts. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, murderer. Yeah, <laughs> that's in my blood. <laughs> so, you know, it, yeah, so that's it. And I, I just think, you know, I always love, um, I always like thinking about, you know, that there is more things that, that, um, that, that is similar between us as opposed to different, you know, because I think, you know, people love to be unique and different. Exactly. And right? that's why I think they do it. Yeah. So they try and promote this because they're, you know, they want to be unique and different, but, I think you know there's a there's a space for people to be similar as well and you know um, have that commonality with with someone and you know we could all you know probably get along a bit better exactly <laughs> and yeah and they'll probably be like if ever but it's yeah politics is hard it's just mm. you know the more people look at being the same as being a bad thing as mm. that's something which is no one really wants to be the same as you know, everyone else, you yeah. know. They from at least in our culture, we're taught to be different, and mm. that difference is good. Yep. And uh, that can also, you know, bring advantages to society mm. that way if we brought up individuals. Mm. Um, but and you know, if you're one of the pack or one of the, one of the sheep, you know, yep. um, sheep or wolf kind of thing. You know, it, it means you don't get anything done, or you don't. You're not changing the world, or you know, changing society. You're just going with the flow yep. and being, you know, nothing essentially, like nothing yeah. contributing to the culture. But is th- is that really so important? Like, <coughs> you know, I, like everybody needs to feel like they have a sense of achievement, right? Exactly. Yes. But everybody's impact is is going to be their own. It's an individual sort of impact, right? Like, so you know, um, to say that there's going to be another guy like a Elon Musk as <laughs> an example, right? Like he's like 
one in seven billion, right? <laughs> yeah, it's so, it's uh, yeah. Yeah, so you know, I think you know, if everybody understands that, you know, that they they're an amalgamation of all these different things, mm, right? Yeah. And so they're they're gonna you're gonna be able to find similarities in every little aspect, but then you're also gonna find nuances and differences as well. It just depends on which one you want to, you know, which perspective you want to focus on, you mm. know. Um, yeah, and it's it, it, to be honest, I think you know, also being the same as a few other countries or a few other cultures makes you different in another way as well mm. because we're not the same as them. Mm. You know, we're not – we don't have anyone who's, like, the same – you know, it, it can – that can also show a difference to others. Mm. You know, sharing that culture, sharing that Chinese ancient culture, no one no one has that kind of thing anyway. So mm. being the same also can show that how different you are. Mm. Um, and uh, language-wise, I mean, I don't see – I, it was because of the Buddhists, right? Of the Buddhists coming across to Japan and Korea that created that culture wave. Of uh, the uh, kanji and everything, right? The Hanzo. Uh, Did you hear about it? Or how? No, it so, uh, I like so, I, and I'm no historian, right? Yeah, no, so me neither. That's why I'm like asking. I think the way that I sort of look at it is like, um, so, so where my ancestry is from on my dad's side is um, from that Fujian area, mm. and then I think. You know that f- from that Fujian area, you can see basically across the water, you can see Taiwan. Yeah. And Taiwan is uh, from Taiwan. North of Taiwan is obviously Japan. Japan. Um. So there would have been you know people who were on boats traveling between the islands, fishing, whatever. Like all those places would have been found or discovered and populated. They must have had some, some point, communication, right? Some and point, so yeah. like I, I I sort of um think back to I guess when they talk about the history of um karate, um so karate um. I guess one of the the, the the versions of history of how karate came about was that it was actually from um, people training uh, Chinese Kung Fu in Fujian and the karate as an art form um, was brought across by, you know, people that travelled oh, on the water. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so, you know, it'll be, in, um, you know, some form of a Chinese person who was training, um, uh, I think, you know, where it's traditionally it could have been um, the style of kung fu that I was doing, which was um, called Wu Zhu Chen, which is five ancestors' fist, um, but there's a there's a few different things in that. So uh, white crane and a few other styles that are involved in that. Um, and then so uh, you know I, I guess they'd probably credit you know the white crane side of it to being what has gone and become karate. Right. right? And then so karate was basically so there's um, different schools of karate, but there's a, a version that's from um, the Okinawan Islands, and then I think the the history is that you know there was people from China that would travel to those islands to teach and, and brought yeah and brought the, the art wow I didn't know that right? yeah because I only the only thing I heard of um, I think it was at school they told us that the Buddhist monks went went over to Japan to teach you know their practices and they obviously had to teach it through their writing and you know things like that so they brought a writing system to Japan because Japan didn't have uh, a writing system it was all okay. verbal and um they said that these chinese monks brought over the hand r- the, they started yep. the writing writing side the of writing side of the language so is 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 hiragana older than kanji no so kanji is older and then they started to develop uh hiragana from hiragana that. after that yep. to make it simplify like yep. simpler yeah simpler. and then so y- like the thing so do you know much about the in terms of the korean writing like do you know much about the history of that? So, uh, um, look, I've only heard it like a few things about it. I wouldn't say mm. I do know. Um, I've only heard that they they used Chinese writing in yeah back in ancient yep. times. Um, that was all they wrote. They wrote in kanji, mm. uh, but they had their like same their as Japan their, their yep. own yeah. So I think from just n- seeing that, and I would guess that they would have done the similar thing to Japan. They probably had a verbal language. Mm. China brought in the characters, and then they just started making their own uh, language. I th- oh no, here we go. Yeah, the king. There was a king, Sejong. Someone called um, Sejong. Probably wrong, but something like that. And he brought in the Korean Hangul system. Yep. And he created the letters. Yep. And that's how those letters were born. Yes, I remember okay. now. Yeah. But the before then, it was all like kanji and yeah Chinese characters. Okay. Yeah. 
Cool. Yeah. So <laughs> history oh. lesson. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, yeah, we, I'm sure we butchered it. So <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> for yeah, yeah. sorry about that. Sorry, <laughs> guys. Uh, yeah, if, if you want to uh, complain to me or or give me a school me in a history lesson, and there's somebody out there that wants to um, come yeah, on, give and, uh, give yeah, give us more of an accurate yeah, <laughs> uh, depiction. By all means, yeah. hit me up and uh, we'll we'll, um, we'll get you on. But um, yeah, definitely. We've we've clocked over two hours. So wow. <laughs> that that went far, like it didn't feel like two hours, no, but it doesn't. It never it, does, does like it? A, it's like a time warp, right? <laughs> yeah, and we just crazy. get talking about these stories and blah 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 blah, and it's just yeah, it's no, really it's cool. great, it's fantastic. So Thank you yeah. for that. <laughs> it was good. Um, so if people want to find you, how do they find you? Uh, okay, so if you want to find my YouTube, it's uh, called Rach M W R A C H E M W. Um, and if you want to check me out, MW stand for? MW, M is my middle name, Millicent, and okay. then White, W, okay. yeah. Okay. So I just, yeah, it's a bit of a random name, but I just thought that was a simple thing. To yep. <laughs> and Millicent um, is a very interesting middle name. Millicent, like, yeah. yeah. Like where did that come from? Uh, is there um, a story behind it? Yeah, actually, it's where my dad grew up. Okay. Millicent is a place, and my dad grew up in the countryside, and that place was named Millicent, and okay. he had a very strong connection to that place, and my mum actually went to Millicent, but they never met each other. Oh, wow. And uh, as kids, they yep. both went there, but they never bumped into each other. So um, that's, I think that's why, and also they like the name. Okay. I was actually going to be called Millicent, but then they changed it to my middle name because my dad didn't want me to be called after a street he grew up <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. 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 Millicent, like, you know, yeah, as, an, as a first name is probably... A bit much. <laughs> it's a bit much, isn't yeah. it? You know, my brother's name was going to be called Sebastian. So Sebastian and Millicent. <laughs> like well, Sebastian's okay. There's plenty of Sebastians out there. I think it sounds a bit toffy, like with the two kids together. <laughs> this is Sebastian and Millicent oh. White, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah, I'm happy with Rachel. Yeah. All right, cool. And yeah. then uh, and, um, Instagram. Instagram is uh, Rach Millicent, once again, mm-hmm. R-A-C-H-E, and then Millicent, M-I-L-L-I-C-E-N-T. And that's, yeah, I update there quite often. Awesome. Thank you so much for That's having right. me on. Um, it's been a lot of fun. I was really happy to reminisce on all these memories. Yeah. <laughs> it's always good to, to – and uh, well, I, I, I was saying to Rach before we started is that you're actually the first female I've had on the podcast. So hey. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> well done. All right, well, thank you. Yeah, um, first woman. There we go. I hope uh, there's a lot more women to come. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. Yeah, we'll see how we go. <laughs> right. Anyways, thanks a lot, man. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.